yeah. three stood us up. And then right when we stood us up, Ray, my co my, in my corner was like, all right, Jay, let him have it. Nice, and then, I don't bro. know, I just came out with my hands up here. And I he had a tendency for doing, for like moving his head. So, boom. Oh, Emilio, the Honey Badger, Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour, episode 74. It's your boy, the Badger, and today we're back with a very special guest, hailing all the way from the 305 we're joined with Miami up-and-coming MMA prospect, fresh off his flying knee knockout, the main man representing Freedom Fighters MMA, Justin Slick J. Vasquez. <laughs> yeah, that was dope, bro. Hell yeah, my God. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, my man. Fuck yeah. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Congratulations, dog. Yeah, thank you, bro. Woo. I'm still like... Like soaking all that in, man, because my phone's been going off like crazy. Yes, you know people tagging Dana and UFC and all that. And like just seeing that keep going down my timeline is like crazy. Yo, you went <laughs> viral, dog. I know, right? It's, it's that shit is making the runs. Oh, what a beautiful knockout! I want. I'm trying to look for the fight. I was gonna ask you. So there was like a breakup, right? Before or like, cause it looked like it almost was the when people don't know, it looks like it's just when the fight starts. Boom, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it was like yeah. four minutes into the fight, so you had a little bit of a tussle, dog. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was like uh, at three minutes and some change in there. But yeah, he's we started the fight. We you know we kind of felt each other out for like. Maybe like 15 seconds to me, it felt like minutes because when, when you're in there, everything's in slow motion. Yes. So we exchanged like quickly, like like once or twice where I, I outstruck him. And then as soon as I overextended with my right, just a little bit, not even an overextension. As soon as I threw my right hand, he ducked it and just bulldozed me right through the cage. And like, I didn't underestimate this guy. And yeah. He was going to be strong. But then when I was defending him against the cage, I'm like, oh, hold up. He's real strong. Yeah. <laughs> like, and he has had he had me pinned up against the cage at some uh -huh. point, and like he, when he had me against the cage, he was just like still pushing in, like trying to drive me through the cage. So I was defending all like using strength and stuff, and then after like about twenty seconds, I'm like, I was like all right, hold up, let's see what this guy's gonna do because he can't keep up that energy." Exactly, it's, it's so, a lot of yeah. uh, it's a lot of pace, right, to do that yeah, for yeah. the whole round. So like he 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 Matt returned me a couple times, and I just like you know I stayed on my knees quick, and I popped back up, and then. He was able to, to sag me down finally, like twice. You know, he got on top of me, and he was just he he had, he had the body lock around my body, uh -huh. and he just wasn't letting go. You know, and I was yeah. just like peppering him up. Every time he adjusted, I would spring up, and then he would just go back to the same thing. So the referee was was um was warning him already at this point. Like you need to have oh, yeah. you need to be effective, and you see action. You know, he said that like four times, and then also my coaches were like. Come on, it's not a wrestling match, you yeah, know. Yeah, he was just know, like trying they, to hold in there, not doing nothing, no damage. Too. Yeah. That's interesting. I always wonder about that one, yo. All right, that's a good thing. That's a good little segue. Yeah, so what do you think? Like, uh, when you're on top, do you think the guy should get up, or do you think if they're not doing anything, it's it's not really uh, um, valid? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean. It's, it's a tough it's, one, right? It's a tough one, depending. Yeah, like, especially with the warnings, and the guy didn't, like, at least try, you know? Yeah, 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 for and, sure. And, like, being in there is one thing, too, and I guess seeing it from, like, a third perspective also, but, like, the referee was, like, warning him, right? And, like, the guy wouldn't adjust, you know? Like, he yeah. would, like, do it quick, and I would spring up, so I was, like, at least I was trying to get out. And then also, like, how I told you, like, I was defending hard. I was just, I at one point, I just... Just totally relaxed. And like I'm like, here, let him move on me. He's not moving, you know? Yeah. Like, I could feel my guy's energy. He was like, don't let his hands loose. I don't want to get hit by this guy. Yeah, he didn't want to feel the, yeah. the, 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 the fury, dog. Yeah, so I saw some of that in the comments, too, on some of the big pages that we posted it. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, nobody saw what happened before. So some of the people were watching the fight. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. referee stood us up. And then right when we stood us up, Ray, my co my, in my corner, was like, all right, Jay, let him have it. Nice, and then, I don't bro. know. I just came out with my hands up here, and I he had a tendency for doing for like moving his head. So boom, I just nice, bro. Well, that was picture rest. perfect, dog. It was <laughs> yeah. So good. It's gonna become a Miami trademark. That flying knee, bro. I know, right? That's amazing, dog. 
And this is, I remember I saw you like a couple months ago at the gym and you were saying that uh, we were talking about like, I thought you were like pretty close on that cusp of getting the call. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So now you're on a, a, a five fight win streak right now, right? Yep. Five fights. Five fight win streak with three finishes or you know, with, a, with, a, with a just finish and then a couple other finishes this too, was man. Two, yeah, I have two finishes and then um, two decisions. Nice, bro. And again, stellar competition, bro. So it's yeah. good, man. Good records, bro. So these, you're going to feel like you're in that cusp right now, man. Yeah, man. That's amazing, bro. And how does it feel since? You've been like, you're still in that little energy rush, huh? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, you're right. Three finishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. nice, man. Because I have, you know, the two finishes in combat. There, but there you go. Yeah, I'm just, all that is still like rushing in to, still, bro. Um, You got knockouts before, right? But it's been, it's, uh, when um, was, what was your other knockouts? With punch or kicks? Yeah, I had like in my amateurs. Nice. Like, I don't really count them, even if they were knockouts. But yeah. like my personal, yeah, um, with my personal record, yeah, I have two TKOs. Nice. Like my first amateur fight in Miami was like a standing TKO. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And then um, I got a body kick. I I dropped the guy to his liver. Nice, and bro. Up with punches. You know that's a TKO. Hell but yeah. But this one was my first like KO. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, up. KO flying knee too, yeah. bro. Ooh, yeah. it's a crazy feeling, right? When it's <laughs> yeah. over and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I only got one, two, dog, and it's like, yeah, that there's like it's unmatched. You know? Yeah. I could see how like um. How people? Do you consider yourself a striker or a grappler more? Like more of you consider yourself more of a striker because you um, have submission wins, you know. So, yeah. I mean, that's I, I started off with wrestling like there in middle go. school, you know. Oh. So you know, from there till now, like I've I've been training for more than half my life. So um, yeah, I did middle school wrestling, high school wrestling, and college wrestling. You know, all that put together is like seven years. You know. Oh, nice. Where did you wrestle at in college? Um, I wrestled for a JUCO in. Um, uh, Illinois called Wabonzi. Oh, in the Midwest. That's like the yeah. legit wrestlers, yo. Is that how you got started in martial arts through wrestling? Um, I got started in high school. Okay. Um, my dad, he's a police officer in Miami Beach. And yeah. um, his, uh, the combat instructor there was cool with my dad. But um, yeah, so like my dad would like talk to the combat instructor. Oh, look, my son's in wrestling. And you know, he's like really excited and he likes martial arts and all that. And that guy was like, oh, you should make him come by the, the my, my dojo. It's actually off here on um, 72nd Street and 157, I think. Okay. And it's called Tiger and Dragon. Oh, I never heard it's, of that one. Yeah, it's yeah. in like, Miami Beach or in Kendall here? It's, it's in Kendall. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I got you there. All right, nice. Yeah. In Kendall, yo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like 152 Avenue and 72nd Street. Yeah, yeah. What kind of gym is that? Like a martial it, arts? Yeah, it's a martial arts karate school. Uh -huh. And like, they, they specialize in like, like the little kids growing up and going into like their teenage years. Oh. So like elementary school and middle school students mostly, some high school students, but um they're they're solid man. Like it's an after school care thing too, where they do they have teachers on site there and they help them do their homework and they teach like math, um English and reading and like uh, Chinese even they teach them different languages. That's the way they to go. They got robotics and it's, uh, robotics and all that. Like it's really cool for like for after school students, you know. And then they also implement karate and kickboxing and some ground fighting, too. No way, yeah. bro. And I you, actually used to teach there. <laughs> oh, that sounds like yeah. a cool little job, man. Yeah, yeah. So that you started, how old were you when you went there, like, about? So I was, like, a, you know, I was, like, my freshman year of high school was when I started. So, okay. you know, I was, like, 16. Nice, man. And they gave me, like, my first, like, feel for the fight game, you know? Like, and I you had, were... My bad, what? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, like, I did um, some, some shoot fighting matches with them. Oh, and like, like boxing know, and wrestling yeah, style? Yeah, boxing and wrestling and submissions on the ground. I had, like, two fights, like, at 16 with them. So was, that's where I was like, I love this shit. And it was, like, in-house fights, like, against their guys? Or you would go to, um, like, other, they had, like, a little yeah, show or something? Yeah, they had, like, another, like, dojo that they were, like, they're, they're mutual friends with. And we go to their dojo and, like, like fight their kids and stuff like that. I mean, I fought, like, a 28-year-old dude. Oh, yeah. One of my first ones. And you were, like, in ninth grade, huh? You were yeah, young, yo. yeah. That's how wow. I figured out like I was about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you had like the fight in you from an early yeah. age, you know. Because I had a bunch of fights in you know elementary and middle school, but you know like I was always athletic, so I always you know try to humble myself with that. Like you know, yeah, those are kids that don't know how to fight really, but you know, st still street fights, you know. That's true. I got I'll you. Do, I'll do good in that. So when I went into the ring, I'm like, uh oh, karma might get me. But I was like, you know what? I'm actually good. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, You're like, damn, all those years. Yeah. But then the, but the athleticism, if you have the right mindset, the athleticism. The mindset was, was, was what it was, though. That's what, it, that's what yeah. a lot about fighting, right? Yeah. A lot of fighting is like, yo, you can learn a lot of skill and tenacity, but like, like, uh, the, like 
Fighting, yes, you need it's, it helps if you're athletic, but you don't need to be an athlete to right. be like a fighter. Yeah. For, you know what I'm saying? Like you can just fight, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely like um, a lot of mental game yeah, in the I fighting, agree. you know. Yeah. I don't know how. What percentage you think? Like, is you think a fight is mental? You know. Yeah, like my my coach used to say it's ninety percent mental, ten percent right? physical. But you know, sometimes I I, I feel like I, I overload the the uh, the physical part is way more than ten percent for me. But like it is super, you know, mental also. Yeah, for sure, bro. Because that mental will keep you stable. And if you become unstable, like, everything will just go wrong. And it no goes fast. No matter how strong or fast you are or technical, like, if you start having, you know, fuck-ups in your mind, that could just shut everything down, just freeze up. It really does, yo. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how, like, but that's the thing with the mental, right? Like, uh, I guess that's part of the things about men being mentally strong is, like, not letting outside things affect you. You know what I mean? We're like, because life is crazy, bro. You can have a match coming up and then... All types of crazy things going on. Yeah. And then you got to figure out how to not let it get in the way of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's it's... wild, yo. <laughs> That's intense, man. Yeah, for sure. So at a young age, you already kind of knew that this is like what you were going to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. Damn, so did you go into college like knowing you were going to fight after? Like the new gen? Because you're kind of like new generation, you feel me? Like yeah. you learned everything together, you know? Yeah, like a lot of guys that I knew, like they wanted to go to college and then keep on with the wrestling like, against the Olympics. You know, that would have been great and everything, but I, I already knew like I wanted to be a fighter. Like after college wrestling, yes. like I wanted I wanted to become national champion in wrestling and go right into MMA. But you know, had some fuck ups there in college that. Uh, oh, sorry, we're. Yeah, that's all right. You're right? all good. We could. Yeah, yeah we could curse right. out. You're chilling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, those fuck ups in college really put things into perspective. You know, like. Yeah, what and you were like you were you were out there like living in the dorms alone, right? Visiting your family's from Miami. You're from Miami yeah, I'm from originally. Miami. Yeah. So born and raised Miami, and then went to Illinois. Yeah, it's in what the was middle it like? of nowhere. Yeah, are you Cuban? Where are you from? Um, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. My, okay. My mom is Puerto Rican. Her family's from Puerto Rico. My dad is Cuban. His family is from Cuba. But nice. my mom and dad met in New York. And that's where I was born, and I was raised out in Miami because we moved here when I was like five. Okay, dope, dope. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. I was a lot of people from North live here. You know, I was born in New Jersey, and then I came here when I was like. 12 or 13 nice. you know yeah. but yeah dog so you started um you went into college knowing that kind of like fighting is the route after so yeah. that's kind of dope too because you went to college wrestling but it didn't really fuck up where some wrestlers they have to like catch up and go into fight mode after wrestling right, yeah. but for you if you kind of know you're gonna fight you kind of you're, were you keeping your striking and kickboxing and stuff or is um, it hard during wrestling when i was out there my my, my yeah. coach his his name is tom the cure okay. and he was he's actually like a multi um judo and bjj champion but he's a black belt under yeah. miguel torres old school guy from the ufc yes i remember miguel torres yeah. you're a legend one of my favorite fighters ever yeah, bro yeah. I got to train with him a couple of times in his gym in Indiana. My coach would, would take me out there. You got to roll with him when you were younger and stuff? Yeah, yeah. It was cool. I trained with Miguel Torres in Singapore when he was fighting in a show in Singapore out there. He was, like, in a tournament out there, you know? But he was already, like, on his way out, dog. How long ago was it when you were training with him? You think he was kind of already? He was, was, oh, for sure he was done, huh? Yeah, he was already out of out of the UFC. And he had his own gym. And I think he was, he was only coaching. And yeah. I, I don't think he was active in fighting still, but... Um, I, I only met him a handful of times because, you know, we were in Illinois and there was like a little road trip up there to go see him. And, and you go with the wrestling crew or just you? It was just the... me and my teammate Ramsey and, and our, our head coach, Tom McCure. You know, he would just go out there and, and do some jujitsu a lot with, um, with with Miguel. That is sick, bro. Oh, yeah. But I actually had my first real MMA fights, first two of them out, out in Illinois. Ah. And um, no, three fights in Illinois, but they were all non-sanctioned. They were so, not on topology, right? Are they no, on they're not. No, they're I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I would have thought, yeah, oh, that's they what's were, and up. And they were good dog. fights too against some good guys. Oh, for sure, over yeah. there, yeah. yo, that's a fighting place, man. Like yeah. the wrestlers, like they're doing MMA, they probably wrestled if they're dudes. Yeah. So it's all like my guys, hard fights. All my dog. guys are wrestlers. Yeah. And, and scrappy with the hands, and um, what's it called? They, they were non-sanctioned, and it was it was my amateur, it was amateur fights, but we didn't have any shin guards, you know. Uh, like <laughs> it's like free I have a three five was it would you get paid you got some um, bread no skis? no I didn't get any bread no shin pads four ounce gloves right yeah I didn't know any better bro all, <sighs> all I knew was like hey if you want to fight there was a fight coming yeah up, they probably like, were like no elbows so it's amateur <laughs> no was there elbows um we came into the middle one time and the referee looks at both of us he's like yeah you guys look experienced so you know we'll let the elbows fly if you guys want uh, we were like nobody answered he's like all right no okay we don't got to it's okay I'm yeah, like, not for right. free, not for free, dog. I didn't know any better, so man, all right, this is normal. Like, all right, I know the rules of the fight, bro. Like, yeah, I yeah, watch yeah, UFC, yeah. bro. <laughs> 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 but, um, That's wild, bro. Yeah. That's was, like in the beginning age, stages, for real, for real. Yeah, you know? I was like, I was like 18, 19. 
for those nice, fights. Man. And then you, so you had those before you started your amateur career in Miami? Yeah. So when I came back to Miami, um, I started up with, um, I believe it's Combat Night. Yeah. Yeah, Combat Night's a great I did, show, I did, dog. I did Combat Night and like XFNs and, um, and some fight time. That was, those were cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah Combat Night. But I had to start back from zero, you know, with my record. So I didn't get to go pro as fast as I wanted to, but, you know, that was only, that would have been like a year earlier, if anything, which was probably good, you know, who knows, you know. I'm not complaining, so. That's right, yeah. because um, in Miami, for people who don't know, in Miami to uh to fight, pro you, they still have that rule, right? So to yeah, fight yeah. amateur, so to fight professional, you have to do five amateur fights. Mm -hmm. But here's the catch with doing that rule, man. It's hard to get fights amateur in Miami. Yeah. Like, it used to be back then. I don't know how. I was just talking to a deer in the last park, like my last podcast, and he was saying the same thing. Like, a lot, I met a lot of guys. I remember a lot of guys from Miami. Like, they had a hard time in the amateur because it's free, so people aren't mm -hmm. committed to show up. You know. Yeah. Bro, I went a whole year one time of, of just straight dropouts, you know, for whatever excuse. You know, the guy didn't show up to the weigh-in, like no show. The guy didn't show up to the fight one time. You know, this guy wanted to put rules in there, like you can't head kick or um, or sweep off his feet. I'm like, just forget it then, bro. If you're making rules like this, yeah, yeah. you don't want to fight. It's okay. Wow. You know, I had a couple of those, and like, yeah, just dropouts, you know, for Damn. a bunch of reasons. And I took, the one time I went a whole year without fighting because of that. That's crazy. A but, whole year, bro. Yeah. Just training. And it's just hard training. to just train to train, you know? In the yeah. beginning, it's chill, you know? Like, your first five, six years. But once you're already a veteran and you've been doing it for a while, you know, you kind of need, like, a, like it's good to have a goal. Yeah, and something so, to like, I even to. put, like, my profile on private even. So, I'm like, man, why are these guys dropping out? Like, oh, that's a good call. That was see, a good idea, see, yeah. You know, I'm not even trying to be cocky, but, like, if you look at my Instagram, it's just straight gym pictures of just me only in the gym yes only like i don't post like anything else so that guy's all oh, this guy's training hard and i guess it gets into their head for sure you know, dog it makes but sense it's in the amateurs like, it happens all the time so yeah man it's not it's a common thing i never thought about that yeah. um i've tried not to look at you ever look at your opponent's instagram before um yeah i have before. Yeah, yeah, i have yeah. but i try not to you yeah. know uh, when I get a fight, I'll like check. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. maybe if I get the name, exactly. Like, right, right, when I, right when I get his name, I'll just that day I'll see like what he, what they've been up to. You know? Exactly, exactly. But during yeah. the fight, I don't want to know shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. After that, you know, I watch a, like a video or two of their fight, just so I can have like a, a mental image in my head of how he moves. Yes. So I could just start like you know like imagining things. You know. Yeah, and definitely. Make, make man. Them come true. But after that, it's just, all right, I don't focus on it anymore. Now it's just, I got to be the best version of myself now. So that always helps me, like, chill. I think that's the best way to look at it, right? Like, yeah. when you're getting ready for a competition and stuff, if you worry about the other guy, like, a lot of times, you just, that's all you can do, right? Just focus on, like you said, yeah, being the best version of yourself every fight, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you got to expect the guy that you're fighting, hopefully he brings the best version of himself. So yeah. maybe you see everything and the guy changes it up and it's going to yeah, be... Sometimes I don't even like to, to plan out that far either because like, Boom. like the fight never goes as, as according to a plan, you know? Yeah, how crazy like, is that one, you right? Can't, you can't predict. I mean, yeah, you could... Um, what is that? Like assume, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or like you can prepare, prepare for the worst or... Yeah, but just prepare for the worst. That's exactly. always the best thing. Prepare you know? for the worst, expect the best, right? Like, yeah. yo, I'm going to win, but... If I if I get tired, I'm gonna find a way. If I get in a submission, I'm gonna get out. If I get rocked, I'm gonna recover. You know, exactly, like you gotta yeah. have all that ready. You can't just go in there blind, crazy. Like yeah. nothing's gonna happen to me because when it does, it's gonna fuck you up, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that did happen to me once, dog. I had a hard ass fight. I was I was gonna like steamroll this guy, and like, I had him like in mad submissions, bro. And I had him in a triangle, and then he fucking was like, just, you know, people are hard to tap in a fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people are holding out with everything, you know? I know, like this last guy, bro. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying so to choke him, and, like, I had my arm all the way in, but the way his neck was built, like, his freaking shoulders were attached with his ears. I'm like, yeah, dog. I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm not choking this guy out. Like, I already <laughs> accepted that. I already accepted that, like, in the first 30 seconds. I'm like, I felt his neck. I'm like, oh, oh this guy. I'm not choking him. So I just automatically started digging in. I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to wrestle my way out. I'm not going to catch a, like a neck on this one, you know? Yeah, you knew. So you I don't lose energy either because, you, you know, like fighting, pressing that guillotine, that gasses a lot of people out and that leads to their defeat. I don't believe in dog. Mm -hmm. I, people who go for guillotines, I'm telling you, dog, I got a guillotine in one fight in China that I took a master notice. I got super lucky, bro. Cause I don't know what type of shape I was in, and I got a guillotine. Yeah. And I was like, and I, and I don't do gu I don't even really. Need, I don't think I've ever guillotined nobody in the gym, dog. Yeah. So it was crazy, you know. <laughs> and I got that. And I was like, oh shit! Yeah. But bro, 
I don't even advise going for guillotines, dog, because I feel like yeah. I would love to know the stats versus, like, if you're getting for the takedown. Yeah, mm -hmm. bro, I'd rather you fight all day long. My wrestling coach from Thailand, dog, if he sees me go for the guillotine, he'll flip on me, dog. You know, he wants me to, you know, yeah, pummel inside, fight the head, you know, because... There's guys with nasty guillotines, but that's a tough, that's a tough, that's a tough one, though. Yeah. Oh, you got, you got a nasty guillotine, though. You got the front guillotine. That yeah, the ninja the... choke. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of so... my favorite ones. I love it, bro. It's like uh, a gun. Like, it's either you hit it or you don't. And, like, I don't like to, like, if you miss, you just got to reset. Let it go. Like, don't try to waste energy and trying to keep it. Because you, you can blow out your arms quick exactly, with that, right? yeah. But you kind of know when you got it, right? Yeah, like, when you boom. got it, you're just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then it's worth the squeeze. You know? Yeah, dog, for sure. It's so funny you say that, bro. That's happened to me a few times. We're like, yeah, you get a guy and I'm just like, okay, this is not going to be a submission this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one guy had him in a triangle before. Like, I had him in a triangle and I'm like, we're, we're, we fought in a ring, you know? So we feel like we're falling out the ring, you know? I'm trying to get the triangle. Bah, He's trying to like push okay. you out to so get yeah, the reset. Yeah, yeah. We're like out of the ring and then like I'm elbowing him. The ropes are in between us. It was just chaos. Like, and then afterwards, my legs were like, <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. <laughs> like, if there's a bar on the video game, my shit was like yellow for a hot minute, Damn, you know? Man. But uh, those submissions are a gamble, bro. Yeah, yeah, I, that's why I have so much respect for when people get them late in the rounds, you know? Like, the yeah. third and fourth round submissions are wild, bro. I think that's the best time to go for it, like, later in the round. If you're going to, like, use it to, like, you know, stall the timeout or, like, if you're going to... If you need a break after just in case you don't get it, you know, that's a good time to do it. It's Yo, 100%, it, You know, use it with time. And you can cook the beans, you know what I'm saying? You yeah, can make, yeah. you gotta get your, cause yeah, you, oh, you're right, bro. And like, you ever like wrestle with some, bro, sometimes you, sh in the beginning of a fight, you try to shoot on somebody, you're like, oh, I can't take this guy down. But it's yeah. like, yo, but try, you know, yeah, that's true, man. Like this guy, he came out for like the Super Bowl, you know, for the Super Bowl tackle. Like, yeah. When he yeah. got me against the cage, <laughs> he was still trying to like drive me through the cage. And I was just like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you do your oh, thing. Oh, you do the opposite. Bit. Yeah, I just I, I stopped like trying to defend him. Yeah, and like I'm not gonna say I gave up the takedown because he earned them, you know. But I was like, okay, I'm okay with this being down this position because I could rest here. Because if you try to open up and punch me, and like I'm gonna be out just like that. Like by the time you cock back, I'm gonna be already like out like a cat, you know. Yeah, I'm fast like that. So like I was staying uh, relaxed, ready to explode out instead of just try to stay static with him because. That was what his. That's what his strength was for sure. He was way stronger than me. There was no doubt. I wonder if um, you remember when Nate Diaz used to get taken. He, you know, I never seen Nick and Nate Diaz. They don't really defend takedowns. I almost think yeah. like they're thinking they they, they want to let the guy work the takedown and get tired of taking you down. Yeah. And they just, what do you think is easier, getting back up or defending the takedown? That's a, that's a tough one, huh? Yeah, that's a tough one. I think some people um, are masters at getting up. They can just yeah. like you were saying, like Matt Return, they just. You know, frame like up. sometimes, like if if it wasn't like I always see being on my back as losing. So like I, my my natural instinct is I'll get off your back. But like also like if it wasn't if I didn't have that mental block in my head, like I'm actually comfortable ball on my back. Like I like to like I can weave hands and like pepper up some elbows and like as soon as you posture up or try to um like advance or or um or adjust, I'm gonna I'm like two steps ahead thanks to wrestling because that's the way I always think like two steps ahead. Like, I'll do this because I know you're going to do that. And when you do that, I'm going to hit this right after that. You know, like, boom. Like, I'm always, like, stacking up. And then I, eventually somebody's going to, like, miss a beat. And I usually don't. And I have, like, an, an escape route to everything. So, yeah, I'm just so, chilling. And you can scramble up good. So, with yeah. the wrestling, with the back wrestling pedigree, you know? Yeah, yeah. You were knowing, so you were, would you submit like your college roommates, or your college, your college teammates? You would hit them with submissions and shit in, in <laughs> Bro, wrestling. Yeah, we, we used to like we were in the, we used to we had we had an own we had our own apartment. Like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't dorm, but we had our own apartment. It's like, savage next, as fuck in there. Yeah, huh? man, she was crazy. Like you know, we would throw parties and then we would go to our neighbor's house and party at their house and like there was like three different like apartments that we were all like like a little circle friends with, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so but you know college life, bro. <laughs> that shit is it gets fun. wild, huh? Especially but, yeah. was that like a was that a college area where you guys were too? Like, we was we were in a, uh, first. We were in Aurora, Illinois. So okay. there was some college students there, but like um like we we're, we're going to a JUCO, so everybody there is like local, so they live at home or like a know. Miami Dade style. Yeah, yeah, kinda, but a lot with le a lot less activity because there's like nothing to do out there. You oh know? my god, you're like in the middle of yeah. Like, how far are you from like Illinois? From like the, where all the shit is, like all the good stuff. Like, oh, like we the were bulls and everything. Yeah, we were like like forty minutes away from Chicago. Oh, not bad. Yeah, oh, we not were, like, bad, we're, bro. we're basically in like Chicago area. Oh wait, wait, my bad. So Illinois is the um, what's the name of the state? The state is uh, uh, 
Yeah, Illinois. It's yeah. Illinois, and then Chicago is yeah, yeah, Aurora, Illinois, and then gotcha, Chicago, yeah. Illinois. I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know. Sh- I don't know. I'm thinking the whole time I'm thinking like <laughs> Chicago is the state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There ain't no state. So from yeah. Chicago, you were like about 40 minutes. Yeah, it's like it's like from South Beach. You know what I'm saying? I mean, at least in the city of Chicago, we were yeah. like 40 minutes. And Miguel Torres' gym was like in a random spot in Illinois, or um, it w- it was in Indiana. Okay, yeah, Indiana. So. That's where all the basketball is and shit. Well, how far were you from there? Um, that was like, we were like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh, so that was a little bit of a hike, huh? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Damn, bro. Were you, was there a lot of Hispanics? Was there any Hispanics out there? Um, like, there no were, Cubans, huh? No, nah, no Cubans, no Puerto Ricans. That's why, like, like people were like, that would be the conversation started. Like, oh, my God, like, you're not Mexican. Because there's a lot of Mexicans That's out what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. bro. And when then, you, yeah. When you leave Miami... Um, not Miami, but like, yeah, outside of, um, the East coast, I think, I don't know, even in, uh, when I travel, you know, yeah. people are like, where are you from? Like, oh, I'm Cuban. Like, oh, my cousin's, my friend's Mexican. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, you're all not Mexican, you know? Yeah. So that's funny. And then on the, on the West coast in, I went to Las Vegas, everybody's, me- it's like mad Mexican, a lot yeah. of Mexicans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody out there and we'll be like, oh, so you're, I'm like, oh, I'm Latino. they be like, oh, you're Mexican? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm Puerto Rican and Cuban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 100%. Oh, okay. What's the difference? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's funny, like, now I know when people, like, now I know when people get mad about that, you know? Because, like, in Asia, you see people and they'll be like, oh, Chinese, Thailand, Filipino, Japanese, and same thing. Like, people, they're like, oh, you're Chinese, you know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> it's funny, for Spanish, they always think, if you're Spanish, they just think Mexican. If you're Asian, they just think Chinese. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I guess, I don't know, for white people, I guess just America, what's American? We don't really got nothing, you know? Yeah, right, yeah, we're a little bit of everything. It's like, yeah, it's like a big mix, dog. English, <laughs> English, like the English settlers and shit, American, you know? American, we're just white. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the thing. And American, dog, the food, yo, what food does, Amer- what, what do you think is like American food? Like burgers and shit, right? Yeah, burgers, hot dogs. Yeah, what do you like better, Cuban or Peruvian food, yo? I mean, uh, Cuban or uh, Puerto Rican? Oh, uh, man, I got to say Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican yeah, food is fire? yeah. Especially because, um, you know, my, I grew up, my mom is, is the Puerto Rican, so she, she's I cooking. grew up eating her food. That Puerto yeah. Rican food just it is different for me. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. Is there any good spots in Miami? That you, is there any Puerto Rican restaurants in Miami? Um, I don't really know. I don't I really think, know. right? I usually settle for the same thing anyway, always. So, oh, you know, rice and beans. Yeah. And, you know, pork chops or steak. Yeah. yeah. Puerto Rican food is good. Gotta have the Tabasco sauce always. On the rice or <laughs> on, the, on the on the steak? on the rice on the and beans on the rice and beans only. really yeah. you're a Tabasco guy what about your yeah. eggs though you do Tabasco on eggs in the morning uh I can yeah but you know only if they're sunny side up if I scramble them and just catch up yeah I like yeah, I'm down with ketchup dog yo <laughs> yeah. you know people overseas don't really fuck with ketchup too much like I don't know if that's an American thing dog. Eggs yeah. with ketchup? I got to put ketchup on all my eggs, dog. Yeah. I can't eat eggs without ketchup. I'm the same way. I'll be cutting weight for a fight, and I'll still put, I'll fucking yeah, put ketchup on. I'm right? like, yo, I'm not, I'm I'm not eating cutting this shit. Weight, so I'm like, I earned this ketchup. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> yo, so you compete at 155, right? Uh, 45. This, 145. This last fight was a catch weight at uh, 152. Okay, 152. Yeah. And then your last few fights have been 145? Yeah, all of them. All oh, all of them. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, nice. Hell yeah. Have you ever gone at 35? Um, no, I haven't been 135 since my freshman year of high school. But you, did you wrestle in 30? You wrestled, you did, wrestled that way and shit? Yeah. Only that's for my up. freshman year. Okay, okay, and nice. Then I, I bumped up to 140. Okay, damn, that's a good weight. Would you think you could fight MMA at 140? Uh, yeah, I could do that. I bet you'd be, I bet you'd be a beast and they'd be so long and lanky. Yeah, because um, I hear about the, the one championship, about their weight classes. You would be, a, like, yo, you'd be. I, I would be a 35 or You'd be great for that weight class. Yeah. You'd be a bantamweight and you'd be a monster bantamweight, dog. Yeah. But you'd only have to weigh 145, so you can do exactly what you do now. Yeah, and I don't even suffer. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're pretty lean, dog. Um, <laughs> do you fight week, right? Um, how much you, how much we losing? Like, is it easy for you to make one forty five? It's too easy, bro. Like, That's it's what so I'm easy saying, that man. I just, you know, I could just tell my brain, like, can you lose three pounds for me? And then boom, just dog. comes right out. You're in, and you're a little bit taller than me, but you're in the same boat as me, dog. You're a man without a class for your body type because one thirty five would kill me, dog. I did one forty five for half my career. Holy shit. Hmm. Never felt good at 145. You know, I won some good fights, but I always felt like, um, my chin too, dog. I felt my punches more, you know? But at 45, I can make that shit so easy, dog. I'll take yeah. a fight on two days' notice, and I can make 45, you know? That's good. Same yeah. thing. Like, I get a 45 fight, and I just be like, oh, I just think of 145, and I get to 149, exactly. you know? Exactly. I think that's that's a good sign, you know? Yeah, but 140 would be your shit where you can struggle a little bit, where mm-hmm. you feel like you're getting it, 
but that 35 is a death mark. I feel like after 138. Yeah, I'll, I'll, hit, a, I'll hit a certain point. Like, it's literally probably right after 140. Once it hit 139, I'll start like, like hurting. You know, it gets like crazy. Using muscle or something. Because I remember in high school, I was like, I was below 7%. Like maybe even 5% at, one, at 135. Oh my gosh. And then mad young too, cutting weight and stuff. Yeah. You were cutting weight in high school? Like, what, how would you cut weight in high school? I would do it the the retarded way bro like i'm not gonna eat for three days straight or not gonna drink water you know i would do yeah. like that and then as soon as they weigh in i'll just you know lemonade and sugars and some bread and pasta and then you know just i was young so like i don't even think i even felt that you know yeah yeah that's crazy right was, well when you're young it's all, i always wonder does it matter like i wonder if there's any young guys who have that crazy elite nutrition i wonder if there'll be a, yeah. i don't know with the at that age nothing bothers i wish you, man if yeah. i had my, my knowledge now with the nutrition yeah i would have been of like I would have been state champ every year. Oh, that's the thing with with knowledge and age and wisdom, dog. You gotta get, you gotta experience, you gotta. It's everybody. I think everybody would say that. Everybody's like, (laughs) ah, yeah. But I'm doing it now, though. That's 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 what feels good, though. Like at least I'm I'm putting that knowledge to use still, and I think I'll for another like 15 years. I feel like you know maybe something like 45. For sure, bro. I think the less weight you cut, the longer your career can go too. Yeah. Definitely, man. And you know? I make forty five so like so naturally. Like a week before the fight, by mistake, I was at one forty eight. Yeah. And my coach is like, Well, damn, you know, you gotta start adding like literal salt to your freaking jugs of, of my water. Yeah. I'm here drinking salt water now, it's like <laughs> damn, trying to bro. stay like full, you know? Yeah. Because the training <laughs> sessions too, bro, like when you're training, you know, like how yeah. many times you when you're training for a fight you're doing like average about two days? I mean I'm I, I'm always doing yeah I, I do at least two a days every single day yeah. but you know I train when I'm right back on Monday I'll be right back to my my going hard schedule but like at a leisurely pace while I'm doing it you know so I don't you, you know, don't want to burn out work exactly you don't want to burn out but this is the best time to train this is the best time to get better I love you training tra- right now yeah it's like my favorite time to train. Cause you're not worried. Yeah. I mean, not worried. But how do you say it? Like, I know what you're saying. Like, you're so free. Yeah. I feel because like- once you get your guy's name, yeah, you're still kind of free. But like, that guy's like, as soon as I hear it, get my guy's name, I wake up saying this person's name. It's the last thing I say before I go to sleep. You know. So it's like, and then the whole day I'm like, I'm in the zone. Like usually I'm like in a okay mood. <clears throat> But when I'm in fight mode, like people are like, "Oh man, what's wrong?" You know, like you, you went from from being all happy here just to being like dark and like to yourself. Like, yeah. They're like, no, it's not personal, guys. It's like, just like kind of setting yourself up to get into the zone. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you yeah. can't really explain it because like this guy couldn't like like what happened to my opponent. You know, like you think about stuff like that. Like, there's a there's a chance that something like that. Even though that's why we train hard, so we don't let that happen. But. Yo, there's some, yeah. yeah, there's somebody like when you're training for a fight, you gotta remember that there's somebody out there that make, that wants to make you have the worst day of your life. Exactly. Like that guy, yeah. like what you did to him, he wants to do to you. That's like his biggest dream. So you gotta remember, yeah. and like it, like it's like you don't want to be like, oh, I'll, you'll kill in there, but you gotta understand, like, you gotta have that mentality because this yeah. guy will kill you. You know, yeah. like the minute yeah. you let up a little bit, you will get finished, dog. And it's like it's a scary you know, feeling, dog. It's, the worst, it's yeah. crazy, dog. And in there, like you're. Bro, you have to put. You have to be like that, you know. Especially for guys like me who are like on the come up, you know. And like every win, like is, like you, you feel you the pressure. You, yeah, you feel you, you. even feel the pressure of of getting beat. It's like you feeling the pressure of you need the win, because like taking a taking an L right now that'll set you back. You know that means oh you're not ready for the UFC because you lost to this guy. You're not ready for the contender because you lost to this guy. Like you're you're literally being put in a pool, like of, of losing. Yeah. And then you got to fight out of that pool and then you got to fight again to get yourself noticed and then you got to like hold it down, you know, and then if you lose again, you know, you just take one step forward and like three steps back because oh you're not the star, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. when you win, you, that, I've never had that. I've never, yeah, that was, that, they lose, win, and then if you lose again, it's just like reset, blah, blah, yeah. blah, you know. Oh. And then like the fight camps, you know. And the worst, dog, if you lose, half the that. money, bro. Yeah. Is that half, half the, the money, money, dog. That's what me and Alan were talking about. Yeah. What do you mean half the money? <laughs> He's loving life in bare knuckle right now because they, yeah. the, they do the – they do – they do They do a full, full th- check. They got the money shit right on there. Yeah, they get Hell the full yeah. check, and they just want war. But the, but the, yeah. but the guys in bare knuckle, like, they'll be like, yo, we want to see death out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no defense. They get mad, you know? <laughs> they'll take points, you know, if you start slipping yeah, your head and shit. It's savage, man. It's savage, dog. It's not a competition, bro. Like, people are like – 
like expect us like we are having fun when we're in training but like like i said when we get the fight it's like bro this is not just a sport man like this it's a fight it's a different it's a different thing like, people think it's like a competition yeah like i don't even put that in the same category but you know it's yeah. a fight well there's a lot of ways to look at it like some people what do you think do you think it would be better to look at it like a competition like mentally like you think you can be no, I don't. some people like i think that's where some people look at it like maybe what if you look at it like as a comp like you don't look at it like that it has a tough one right like if you look at it like a sport um it's like you're okay with losing because like <laughs> oh it's just a sport or it's just a competition but like like to me it's not man like that's that's a fight you know I feel like you can't, and like it's either you win or you die in there, like straight up. Because when you're fighting, you know, yeah, the referee's in there, but for like for the time that you're being free, like you are trying to kill that guy in front of you. It's crazy. It's not like you're thinking this is just a competition. I'm only gonna hit him just to drop him. Like um, when I threw my knee, like yeah. what was going through my head was, was darkness. You know, it was like make this guy respect you by like all means necessary. So when we boom, I hit him with that. And, like, it just was going so fast on the outside, but on the inside it was crazy. I'm like, now, now solidify and then, it. And then, yeah, yeah, make sure, on top, I, It was dog. like, make sure he's done. Like, mm, double yeah. tap. You know, and, like, it was nothing personal. It was like, this is, like, go out and get, go, go out and get your respect now. And, like, you know, it's just. You know, nothing personal against the guy. I no, hundred percent. But he's gonna, they're I mean? gonna do. He would do it to you. Yeah. So that's how you gotta think. You know, like so, we were saying yeah. before, that's his goal to make it the worst day ever. You know. The the thing where the, the, the some people do look at it like as a sport wise like um like the guys like the Thai fighters they do look at the they do just fight all the time like they don't do I think it's like how you look at losses too bro like mm-hmm. well the good thing about MMA is that one win will turn it around for you you know like you can yeah, be like yeah, a little bit of, like you know, you can have a one good year like look at Masvidal you know mm-hmm. like or Nate Diaz you know one good year and you can like you know people what's good about MMA before um like towards boxing dog boxing is like bro you lose and that's it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're done, 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 those, done. A lot of the greats got, like, records in O, you know, this number in O. Yeah, one and two, it's or, crazy. like, two, you know? And it's crazy. They'll ha- or, yeah, and, and they'll be, like, 43, 450, 40, oh, no, not too many people have done 50, right? But, like, yeah. I think only Mayweather, right? Or, no, other people, yeah. like, um, uh, Rocky Marchand. There's three guys, I think, that have, like, crazy records, like, like I don't, Mayweather. I don't pay attention to boxing, like, like, that too much. But, yeah, there is a couple guys with that record. But I do see a lot of guys that, like, 30 and 0 or like 15 20s and like 30s and O's. yeah i'm like damn like that's a lot of fights bro that's 83 all- fights and then you're it's a lot of cans not a cans but yeah. it's a lot of um especially There's prepared some- fights for you yeah or in MMA, like it's hard know. you know yeah people don't really don't really like take that into account they just see 33 and 0 like whoa this guy's 33 and oh yeah yeah he'll yeah, beat yeah. anyone it was like but who's he actually beating it's a tough one right because like that yeah. experience does go for a lot you know yeah like, yo, in Thailand, the, f- the fighters, they don't ask, like, they don't, the Thais don't even know their, their record, bro. Oh, they shit. just, they go by fights. Same thing with, like, kickboxing, too. Like, like I mean, how many number of fights they yeah, have in total? Like, like, yo, so, like, you could be five and five, but, like, if you have ten fights, I'm like, oh, he has ten fights, that's how they match you up, you know? Oh, like, shit. 25 fights versus 25 fights, That's kind of you know? real. See, that's, like, not, that's not really competition, like, to me. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a, you're getting thrown against somebody mysterious you know he could be better or worse and you don't know oh yeah when they do like that <laughs> that's not that's a competition cra- that's to me, crazy bro. that's crazy yo. that's that's war man yeah for sure bro especially if your livelihood's on the line so like i don't take away from those guys at 33 and all either because they are going out and getting it but no no 100 percent. in general man. you know people don't really like look into that no in mma you definitely get um fed into the fire earlier you know and there's so many ways to lose dog you know and like yeah. yo you know guy i know guy i have friends bro that will get like have a rough start of their career be like start off 0-3 because just like mixed match fights or like bad opportunities or like you know you go you know you know how it is in the game dog you, yeah. the promotion has their their guy you know what i mean and they build them up and shit you know so when you got out of college that's when you move back you move back to miami like knowing you want to fight mma or you had already had your amateur fights right yeah like i've I always wanted to continue with it, but um, like when I moved back, it was kind of like on a on the wisp of air because like it was one of my fuck ups, you know. We um we got in trouble for throwing a party in our apartment, which was funny because it was like literally right down the block from the police station. We were living in Plano, Illinois at this time, which is like 
20 minutes from Mubanzi, you know. But in Plano, it's like the smallest city in Illinois, by the way. They filmed a mo- um, They filmed uh, a Superman movie there. I forgot which one. Yeah. But um, while they were filming it, like me and my buddies were up there, like in the apartments, like looking down at the movie set. And it's there's a, um, it's the one with the, it's like a Supergirl. I, I didn't even watch the movie, but it's like the other like Superwoman is there, like the evil one. Like, you can see it from him. your window. If we can see that happening, like from our window, it's cool. And there's like a um, there's a building that has an American flag painted on it. Yeah. You know, right across the street from there, in the top loft. And that's that's where we were in Plano, Illinois, when we were throwing this party. So, um, yeah, but the police came because somebody was pissing outside on the wall because, like, it's the downtown area. Uh-huh. And, like, nothing is going on there, bro. Only, like, like less than a 1,000 people live there. So nothing's you know? really, yeah. So if something happens, bro, everybody knows about town. it. It's a ghost town. Like, if you hear any music, you know where it's coming from. Yeah. And the bars are, like, right in front of us. One across the street, one across this street, and one across, like, right behind us on the same block. But, like, it's quiet. It's all locals. Anyway, this guy, one of these, you know, you know, college punk there, he's pissing on the sidewalk. They get right in front of our place. And that they, the police used the, the, the copies that excuse to barge in. And he was like, oh, I see this, everything. And they had, like, yeah, they had like some stuff out there and yeah. shit. Like, partying out, party city and shit. Party city, you know. Damn, oh, and then the guy. The drinks were going, you know, everything that would be at a, at a party. So it was one cop that, that walked in at first, and I don't know what told me to do this. This is what pissed him off. So I was like, oh, hey, look, you're. Like, he was trying to walk through the house and see more shit. We're like, bro, we got to get this guy out of here. I'm like, hey, look, the cops are calling you at the front. I don't know what your name is, officer. Yeah, your your partner needs you. Oh. <laughs> so then, like, so like, I'm walking out with him, and he like walks out. He's like, yeah, well, what do you need? And as soon as he walked out of my apartment, I just stepped right behind them and I slammed the door shut. I'm like, bro, you have to go get a warrant. You can't just come into my house like that. He got pissed and he tried to like put me like in handcuffs and walk me outside and like, oh, hold on, you got to stay down here and all that. And you're not allowed back up into the house. So um, like, I was texting my boys upstairs and like, yo, guys. They're gonna get the dogs. They're gonna come up there, and they're gonna have everything. Like, they're getting a search warrant because they, they knew like the, um, I think the mayor or somebody like that who could, yeah. like write the warrants. But this was like at three in the morning, so like they they're, they're calling this person back. to wake them up. They oh, so woke what you said up. was real when you shut the door on them. That was for real. No, they yeah, can't yeah. really do that. Oh, because yeah. they can't just go into a house. I mean, at least I thought so. Cause I'm like, hold up. I don't think they can. Yeah, though. but I did it anyway, and like it kind of worked. So that all right, slick, we're gonna dog. go get the we're gonna hey, go get the slick warrant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man but it ended up they they ended up getting the warrant anyway and um oh my they God. brought the dogs up in there and they tore the place up and down and i you know we just had like like a bunch of weed like yeah like a like a, like a quarter pound like more than a quarter i don't even uh, know yeah and like they they arrested us and because um one of my friends had little baggies you know they they pinned up some felonies there oh so fuck. they took us all into, into the into the station and we all had to get you know fingerprinted and our pictures taken and we got thrown in there for the night and like when my coach heard about that he was like oh that's strike three because i already got in trouble two two more times before that oh and that's why you had to come back to my and so you came yeah. back home after that yeah I, I, he sent me to hell he was like man fuck this i quit Oh, no way. You know, the team after that year was non-existent. For real. So, yeah, I went, I went back to Miami. Oh, and then, in my, and then uh, so you had already kind of, but you were already, like, training and stuff like this, so you knew that this yeah, is what like, you want to do anyways. Yeah, like, I, I had to end, like, um, like, from the spring to the summer, I had to finish out there. Yeah. You know? and, oh, um, yeah, to finish your semester. We but you were kicked off the wrestling team and stuff? Yeah, like, the wrestling team was done. Like, I was kicked off the team. Fuck. This was after the season, so, you know, it yeah. was, like, around this time, actually, that this shit is going on. So Damn, like idle after, hands. After yeah. the seasons, when you guys were having the party and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because during the season, you'd probably be a little bit more focused, you know? Not even, bro. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. That's, that's, that was part of my fuck-up, too, man. I wasn't focused, bro. Like, I was about, you know, the college life. Don't think about tomorrow, man. Let's just, you know, have fun. Yeah, and being young, yeah. dog, that's yeah. part of the game. You know what I'm saying? But like, if that hadn't happened, I would have never, like, woken up the way I did. Cause, like that kind of put yeah. a lighter, you think, oh, that kind of, like, put a fire under your ass. Yeah, like, I hit rock bottom, bro, because when I when I even came back to Miami, like, I was, like, I, would, I won't say homeless, but, like, bedless, you know? Um, my mom, like, my family had, you know, split up, my mom and dad, you know, the house is going for sale and all that, so, like... I, like my brother my older brother he's doing his own thing you know he has his own job his own place up in north Miami beach he's yeah. doing his thing and you know my dad took my sisters my sisters with him to his house and my mom moved to boca raton 
But um, I knew about my gym that was here. Um, Amer- at that time, it was American Top Team that you know now is it used to be a um, Young Tigers Foundation. American, the American Top Team, yeah, Kendall. Kendall, yeah, and now it's Freedom Fighters MMA. So you knew about that when you moved when you moved to Miami. You yeah. found that's what I was gonna ask you. That's why I want to segue. Like, how'd yeah. you find Freedom Fighters? Yo? Because my one of my teammates, Oliver, like my dog, I love like, Oliver. Yeah, and he's I've a man. known Oliver by the way since elementary school. No way. Yeah. Oh, and you guys are like fucking tight. You yeah, guys are yeah, good training tight, partners. Bro. He's dog. literally my brother. Like we, he we came from New York at the same time into the same elementary school, and then yeah. like when it, like from the first day we met, like all right, it's always competition. Like I'm faster. Uh, you know, but better basketball player. Like, everything. Always rivaling, and we went to the same middle school, high school, and he came out to college with us as well. He was no a, way. Yeah, he was oh, in that group with us. Did he wrestle? Sorry, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got him kicked out? <laughs> yeah. So you guys both? <laughs> well, all, we, all, we all got kicked out we together. We all got kicked out together. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. That's terrible. No, yeah, you yeah. Motherfuckers. Yeah, we've been through it all together. Bro. That's so yeah. good. Like, it's a fun. Now, looking yeah. back, you're laughing. You guys are both kind of on the rise, yeah, dog, yeah. crushing it in MMA, you yeah. know? So he was the first one to go to um, Freedom Fighters. Yeah. So Oliver, he was he was there with um, well, when it was American Top Team. And it was in Kendall, the nice gym or in Young Kendall. Young Tiger, sorry. And the he was doing he was doing that on the off season of wrestling ah. in high school. You know, he would go there. You know, pop in and out. Yeah. So like I had already known about them for a while. So I already knew like okay, I'm gonna go to college, get my national championship, and then this is where I'm hitting as soon as I get back home. Like I already. Like even though I had a lot of fuck ups, I've somewhat have always stayed on my path, like hardcore, like to a T. Yes. Like, it maybe I didn't get the national, you know, golds like I wanted, but like I'm still following the same paths as if I did, you know, because this is what I was gonna be doing anyway, with or without. The, yeah, that's the what I'm saying. Championships. Yo, it all like everything ha- like it's not to sound corny, like oh everything yeah. happens for a reason. But sometimes when yes, you look bro. back and you see the way Definitely. things play out, you're like, all right, yo. It, it, it matured time, me. It grew me up. And exactly, like, dog. You know, like MMA especially. Like it's now it's not losing a match. You know, you got put on your back and you got pinned. Now it's you know, you get flying knee in the face and you get knocked out, or you know, you just get your ass beat for 15 minutes and now you know you're embarrassed. You know. Like, now shit is even, like, real, real. Before for, it was real. Now it's real, real. <laughs> for you training-wise, like, consequence-wise, for training, you mean, yeah, the right? Con- the consequences, they, it's they, no they, joke they now. rise up. Yeah, you know? dog, you can be brain damaged. You can be all fucked up. You and know what I mean? And, you know, getting older, too. Like, this is what I do for money. It's like, I don't want to go home with half a check, bro. Dog, the half a check is yeah. the crazy shit, you know? That shit hurts. I've gone through that pain before, too. Bro, that's the worst, dog. Cause you go, and when you get the half the check, like, you got to be, that's why you got to be kind of, you got not crazy, like, not delusional, but you got to be, like, so crazy that nobody, because, like, you both signed the contract, so both guys oh, yeah. think, for sure, I'm not losing this fight. Somebody's going to lose, Yeah, you know? that's crazy. See, Somebody's that's gonna why have it's not check. a competition, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not only that's, do you lose, but, like, you, you lose at life, too, man. Dog. Imagine, That's bro. How take it, you know? And you sign the contract. You're not like I'm gonna sign this contract, and you're not accounting for like half the money. You're not yeah. accounting for your half a check. You're yeah. thinking like I'm gonna do this with that. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah, it's fucked That's up. That's the worst man. feeling. I was in like my first loss in Vegas. I was kind of like on a on the cloud nine before the fight, you know, because I was already training good. I was more disciplined than I was in college, you know. But like something still wasn't right. Like, I was underestimating my guy. I'm like, oh, like, he looks dorky or whatever, you know, and like he he walks like flat footed and like he does not he's not even an athlete, mm. but like but he was in better shape than me and I found that out in the fight, so I was like man how can I lose to somebody who's not better than me what the f- like what the fuck is going on I'm like you know what like can't lie to yourself you know what's up like I wasn't in good enough shape, cardio is king yep exactly and I learned that I'm like well that means I couldn't do things better you know. Like, instead of looking for excuses, I'm like, hey, you got to find the problem. Because in the fight game, if you try to beat around the bush, you're just going to you know, cut yourself off. Short. You're only you're only lying to yourself. Exactly. And you're only cutting yourself short. Yeah. And it goes with everything, dog, across the board. Yep. In life, bro, you can, you can think you're getting away with something, whether it's cheating, whether it's, you know, cutting corners. But, dog, you know what it is, too? It's that fucking five minutes before you walk out when you're like, did I fucking do everything? That yeah. five minutes before you walk out is when you're like, all right, you start thinking about all the sessions you, d- important you The sessions right you didn't go to. The truth comes out. When I cage, fight, bro. when I fight, when my best performances, or I, that's what it's so important. Like, when I have a camp, when 
I know I did everything, that five minutes is like, can, it can either be like the most amazing five minutes, like yeah. invigorating, or it can be the also most mentally hard. But if you're mentally strong, I know guys who don't train worth a dick, <laughs> they fucking, but they're just a maniacs, dog. They, yeah. You think, this guy trained? You're like, how did they, you know what I mean? Like, you'll see this guy, like, I've seen guys like who don't go, show up late, leave early, just spar, don't do conditioning, and then they're just animals and fight. But for me, I, know, I, gotta, I gotta have that no doubt because that five minutes before dog you know like that's when you start thinking the meals that you missed the weight you know what i'm saying like did you did you take any corners you know yep for sure dog the juice comes out in the cage bro that's why it's so special yes yes it's like you're really naked in there yeah. dog and people can see which is crazy and you don't need to know much about fighting when you watch a fight to feel it you know yeah, yeah. it's wild dog it's yeah, a serious yeah. one bro there's nothing like it you know yeah. i'm doing comedy now yeah. and it's very similar, you know? It's a different battle, you know? Yeah. The only good thing, the thing with comedy is, like, we're fighting, though, like, as ready as you are for a scrap, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's good is that, like, as long as you're prepared, you can do it. But with comedy, the only thing is, is you, you can't rely on the people, you know? Which is wild, yeah. dog. But it's the same, like, mental challenge, you feel me? Yeah, I feel you. Because it's like, um, you're, like, you're, like, freestyling out there, you know? And there's a crowd. It's kind of like the same thing. Not until my last fight where the crowd was there, I felt the, the atmosphere not affect me, but it was different. Oh, the combat that you fought with had a crowd, right? Yeah, we they're, had bringing a bringing yeah they're bringing them back. They're bringing them back. They're bringing it back. You fought in the Corona era. Oh, so you went pro in what, 2017? Yeah. So yeah. Corona fucking hit you right in the middle of your fucking come up, dog. You're like, yeah, man. oh. I actually got to fight during it, which is crazy. I was one of, only one of the few um, for for Global Legion. They fucking kept it alive. Danny Chavez fought on that. A few guys fought on that yeah, show, Danny right? Danny Chavez fought on that show. Um, no guys crowd, no crowd. Well. That's um, how Danny got signed to the UFC. I think. I think he got the knockout in there and then got signed after. Yeah, yeah. Go. Yep. That's a good show. How you like Global Legion, yo? I man, I I like them a lot. They have I loved their their uh, their um their quadragon. They looks dope. It, I've seen their shows in a uh, UM one, I think once. You yeah, know? it's a huge square and like. <gasps> oh, that the one. The most space I ever fought in. That one was amazing. I was gonna ask you about that. Okay, that's not the one that I saw. Yo, that square looked crazy. I was watching. Yeah. That's where you got the guillotine, right? Or, yeah, yeah. Yo, that. What was it like? That's like that looked like the Kimbo Slice Square from back I in liked the day. It yo. I liked it better than the than the than the octagon. No way. I like the circle too. The, the combates, the, the haula is pretty cool too. Combat is a circle. Yeah, but the the global legion one is the biggest. Like I don't know the the parameters, but like like you could like run in there <laughs> like a couple steps, like ten steps forward. Um, something about a big cage makes you fight better, right? I don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah. Like you just look better fighting in there, you know. Like when you have space, you know. I just feel yeah. like more free, right? Like you don't feel the walls closing in on you. It's like yeah, I, like, I right. fought in some cages where you take two steps and you're in the middle already. Like this, yeah. And then so it kind like, of fucks up everything, right? Like yeah, it's hard yeah. to throw your like. In the club, it was in the middle of the club too. Like my last amateur fight, like my guy was like, he, I, I don't know where he's from. He's like, he's like Indian or Arabic or something, but like. His skin complexion, like he looked like a shadow, bro. Like oh, in dark ass club, we yeah. like playing like a, like in one of those I, we club at, shows, right? Passions. Evolution. Oh, yeah. I think I fought in there, yo. Yeah, we're at Passion's nightclub, and like I could just like like he'd be moving like this, and like bro, like, you look like a shadow. Like I can't even, like, I can barely see what I'm trying to hit. It's crazy. Um, uh, Inca Warrior blood, dog, and I got yeah. the Cuban boxero blood. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm chilling, dog. You're going you feel to be me? a fighter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love it, dog. And got the good cardio too. You know the yeah. Inca, the Incas, dog, the Inca Warriors. They got the mad running, cardio, yeah. dog. Running in the mountains and shit. And then the Cuba, I love Cuba. I tell it like when I've been traveling, I live in Thailand and shit. And people like, yo, you Cuban? They like they love the boxing and shit, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's good, dog. Cuba has a good name uh, internationally. You know, yeah. everybody fucks with the Cubans. You know, Cuban boxing. That's what our they style love it. is. They we love do. us. It sounds cool too. Like when I describe my style, like it's Cuban kickboxing, Cuban boxing, yeah, Cuban taekwondo, Cubano, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Yo, when you were fighting amateur, you were saying that you fought this guy. It's you were a striker more primarily, right? Like I would say, oh, well, you're wrestling. That's right. You're saying, you're, but you like to strike, dog. Right? Yeah, I do. I love. I love striking. Like I love wrestling. You know, mm. like that's what I grew up doing. Yeah. That's what brought me to the sport. Like, like my wrestling, my instincts in wrestling is like ultra instincts and like now my my stand-up is getting to like my wrestling level so gotcha. it's like like i'm i'm pretty well-rounded and pretty complete like i'm i'm just, i love jiu-jitsu too i'm sick with it yeah, yeah i just don't get to compete in it as much as i would like to and jump in the gear as much as i like to because you You're know fighting yeah I'm always is that what you fight call camps. it that's yeah. what i feel like too like now like this is my favorite time to train because like i get to do everything now you know not just specific work but the only thing that really changes is i don't get in the gi before training because 
that gi sweat is grueling. So it's like I have to, you know, get my main my main focus training in the MMA or like the situational and positional MMA stuff. Listen, so. I used to think, um, all right, the gi one is hard and yeah. the jiu-jitsu one is hard because, bro, I think, and honestly, like what I'm learning now in the game, like the best guys in the world, like some of the gyms that I've trained at, like the CKB guys, like a lot of like the Australian gyms and like some of these guys that are champs, they're stint. Like a lot of these guys, jiu-jitsu, they're not even doing half the shit that I did in jiu-jitsu. Like they're not drilling yeah. arm bars from the closed guard and like they're trying like, yeah, yo, yeah. they're in their guard. They're like, yo, I'm either getting up, I'm getting a half guard, you know, like it's very simple to like breaking, broken down the jiu-jitsu to like, because mm. you know how it is like I man, jiu-jitsu, like it's so hard. It's like a lot of that shit, you know what I mean? It's, it's weird, bro. It's a weird one, you know? With I like the, the, with the scraps, it though, yeah. You know what I'm I like saying? I like because you could, you could pull it out out of anywhere with the jiu-jitsu, you know? They the could save you and you could attack with it too. And the purest, it's dog. It's good to know. Um, I love when I see fighters, like, in the UFC that, like, are, are purists. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I do like seeing solid jiu-jitsu guys make it through. Oh, true. Oh, this is what I was saying for the MMA, for the amateur. I want to go, um, it's when you're coming up an amateur, like, if you're a striker, it's kind of hard. Like, it's a little bit harder for you an amateur for your career. Like, because if you're a wrestler and you just want to take the guy, it's easy yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How many amateur fights, right? Like, you see, like, a guy lose, you're like, damn, you don't really know about that fight. Because the guy yeah. got, like, a takedown with, like, it takes you a minute and a half to get the takedown. Mm -hmm. You get the takedown, and then the round's over. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you only got three minutes. So it's weird with amateur how, like, the strikers, you kind of almost have to wait to get out of that game, yeah. dog. You know I what wrestled, I'm saying? I wrestled a lot of my amateurs because, like, okay, there you go. with the stand-up, like, I knew there's always a puncher's chance. But I knew, like, oh, like, nobody's going to get no chance with me on wrestling. Exactly. You know? So, like, I, I guess I would resort to that in my amateurs. And, like, maybe some of my um, upcoming, when I was first starting out as a pro, too. Yeah. Like, I need to secure the dub, like, no matter what. And now, like as my career progressed, I'm like I'm I'm comfortable doing stand up because now it's not really a question anymore. Like, oh, he got lucky with his stand up, you know, or he got lucky with his wrestling. Because now, like I've shown, I can wrestle my ass off, and now I've shown like I have great stand up. Like in my last fight, that went to a decision. Yeah, and that's what fight, I'm saying. And the fight before that, like I showed off my striking for the first time. That's what I mean. Like as a like yeah, uh, for, I was looking at your fights. And I was like, oh yeah, you, you look like a striker from your last few fights. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but you like, did have those submissions. You had the slick yeah. submissions. You know. Yeah. Like now that people are like like I'm making a name for myself, now I'm more comfortable with the, like like fighting, you know, fighting a little more like exchanging with the stand up because it's like I don't know you can't I don't know or like um, I know like it won't persuade the judges in any way, but like it's like just from my legacy I guess you can say like now you know like I'm not just a lucky striker like I got the skills so like that pressure is off now. You know, like, I'm not just showing off. You know, that's my skills for real, you know. So yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. now, now I, I won't be as hesitant as to, to strike now and let go with my hands and my feet. Yeah, it takes a while, right? Like Yeah, uh, yeah, it takes a while. And that's funny because this is my 10th win. And I remember Manolo saying, um, like, Manolo, my head coach from Freedom Fighters, that um, it takes about, like, 10, 20 fights to realize what kind of fighter you're going to be. 1,000%, bro. Yeah. I hit my stride. At seven and four, like no, before that, because I went on a little winning streak. When it, yeah, bro, like so, that hunt, it takes ten fight. You gotta have ten pro fights to find your range, and then for mm -hmm. the, for the game to slow down. Right, right, right. It's yeah, it's. Did you notice down the more now. you fight, the more you can see in there? Yeah, yeah. Like and my then the more it closer from it gets here to like, it's the, opening up a little bit. The closer it gets to sparring. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Where you, where yeah, yeah. That's a, better, like, that's a better way to say it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's ten fights, dog. Um, yeah, you made some good points there, man. You were saying, like, um, I feel like I had that same thing. We were talking about, like, you were training for a fight, so you had to, like, kind of, like, when you get the, oh, now's the best time to train, you were yeah. saying, right? Because you can, like, focus. Because I'm then, in, like, in a good mood, and, like, this is what I love to do anyway. Like, like I was just sitting at home the other day, I'm like, man, like, it's it's 10.30, like, I have an hour before kickboxing. Like, I'm just going to go to kickboxing. I'm, I'm awake. I'm not doing nothing. Like, I'm going to be bored all day if I don't. Exactly. And I had a good-ass time just chilling, bro. Like, not being in the zone and having that stress of, oh, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy in my head, you know? Yeah, and then um, when you get a fight, sometimes, I don't know, for me, like, sometimes when I had a fight, I was just kind of, like, in training, I was just focusing on the game plan, dog. So a lot of times I was like, my goal is to take the guy down. I'll just focus on, like, three or four things where I'm not really opening my game a lot, you know? Yeah. 
I always wonder though, because um, for me, like if I slowed myself down a little bit, fighting too much, like I'm, am I, I have a lot of fights, but I got them quick, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was in camp for like like four, you know, five, six fights a year sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's like the whole year. <laughs> yeah. So then I wonder, like, if um, if I'm always training for a fight, like if I didn't really do too like as much skill training as I should have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. And then like taking off from yeah, so a little, a little bit burnt out, you know. But yeah, that's important. I, I gotta make sure it's not like burn myself out mentally. That's the thing, bro. Like. When you're in a fight, when you get, like, I don't really do fight camps because I'm always just training, like, year, day in and day out. It's what I do. It's, like, it's my lifestyle. So, like, I never really stop training. But um, the only thing that changes is now, like, you know, I'm training and I'm having fun. And, like, I can, like, crack jokes and, like, laugh a little bit. But once you have that guy on your mind, the only thing that changes is, like, nothing matters but this guy. So, like, you know, I'm not really in the joking mood. I'm not joking with everybody. I'm not laughing, you know. Like, yeah. I, and I, I just picture it like like we're at the enemy's gates, you know, or like we're on the way to the gates of the enemy. Like we're 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 campfiring it out every night. Like you're not comfortable at no no matter what. Like we're going to war, so it's like no time to you know be emotional and have fun. You know, you just get, you know what's ahead of you, and you must do everything you can to prepare until That's that it. day comes. And then when you get the, the when you get the win. <clears throat> it's like, bro, How? I could breathe again, you know? <sighs> and it's not like it's, like, stressing me out, like it's killing me, but it's, like, like it's just something that, that changes, man. It's, like, I enjoy that ride, too, though, because that, that's, a, that's a crazy, like, euphoric feeling, bro. It's, like, it's, like, no, like no other. When you get to the back, you know, and it's just kind of quiet, it's like, ah, you, just, you did Ray, it. Ray yeah. is so good at reminding us about that, about the nerves and how, like, this is your body preparing for yourself, preparing itself for it. The fight or flight, you know, like the fear you're feeling is good. Just turn it into something else. Let it, let it, let it turn you into something else. Yeah, shout out to Ray, yo, fucking yeah, love that man. guy, dog. Yo, yeah, I love. Yo, you train at Freedom Fighters, one of my yeah. favorite gyms in Miami, bro. With Manolo, you train with the legend, dog. So yeah. you've been training. So since you started your MMA career, you've been at Freedom Fighters, right? Since yep. the, since uh, you come, so you came from college. You go to Miami with Oliver, which I never knew. Yeah. And he was already kind of there and going already. Yep. And then he brought you in? Yep. My, my Our friend, Javi, he was the one that, that started to brought. That Javi, brought Richie's Oliver. brother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a must, that's, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Shout out to Javi and Javi's Richie. Javi's the man, dog. Yeah. And Richie too, bro. Yep. I love that squad, dog. Yeah, man. Yo, nothing's changed. I was in there the other day. It was like, yo, yeah, uh, the warm-ups just felt so good. I got yeah. like very nostalgic, you know what it's I'm a, saying? It's a family vibe, bro. It's, yo, Hey, and the 12 o'clock class is packed, dog. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, bro. When everybody <laughs> was jogging, warming up, you know, stacked. On Saturdays? To wall. On, I, went, I just went on a Tuesday, like oh, yeah, on the Muay Thai day, but yeah. it was just packed, too, with like fighters and regular people, you yeah. know, which was great, man. The gym's growing, now. It's so, really growing, bro. Like, it's it's taking a good turn. When you started, you were in the nice one. You were the, the one in Kendall, the one in the Kendall area, like I went, like around here, like right? Like in the warehouse across yeah. the street from, um, the, from Arcade Odyssey. Yes, and then they moved yeah. to... Um, they moved back to the original location. Yeah, so that's like, where they used to be. I used to train in that location. In the, in the warehouses? I used to train in... I started at, when it was called Digitism and all okay, and Digitism yeah, were yeah. together. Yeah. They had a ring in there where the, you know, where the little section yeah, of the I, bags I, are. I never got to see any of that. I only oh, saw pictures of that. Boom. So I used to train there. And then when I moved to Thailand, they were in the nice one. They were in the one in Kendall, the big yeah, one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then when I came back, they had already went back. So I would visit, and sometimes I would pass by the gym, you know what I mean? And they were already back in the old spot, you know? Yeah, that's where I, where I started in the warehouses. Yeah, and you got the Manolo style, dog. I yeah, saw yeah. you were throwing the, the, the same right hand, the, the kick that Leon Edwards knocked out. Who's oh, with? yeah, bro. We, that's the Manolo special, dog. Yeah, been, that's like I our warm-up move that we drill, like, no matter what, like... Like every morning, we have like a certain like uh, arsenal that we just warm up with every every time, and that's one of them. That's one of my staples that I got from Manolo. I got that from Manolo. The same side kick. I do it with the low kick, the body, and the high kick. You can do it all. You know, that's His one style of style is sick, man. It just looks cool too, bro. Uh one of my favorites. Like real, real innovator. Yeah, I wonder if how. Yeah, I wonder if I could pull off a pot. I, I want to get him on here, dog. I'm gonna get him on, dog. Because yeah. Manolo needs to get Manolo that love, dog. Shine, man. That's what I'm Nine saying. He's the best. He's the him. best coach, and he's he's the listen. MMA coach. He's for sure the best in Miami right he's now. Made, he's made he's made fighters and and coaches for other people too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he can and do it all. And his style, dog. He's an innovator. That's the thing about yeah. Manolo, bro. He's an innovator, dog. He's doing like yo. He was doing like the the punch to the thigh. You know what I mean? Yeah, You've seen yeah. Alex and all these guys. You see it come out in the UFC. You, that's what I'm saying, yeah. bro. Like, yeah, man. He was. <laughs> Yeah, always thinking outside the box. And he had this creative, like that Cuban, like you're saying, the Cuban kickboxing. Like, he's like yeah, a kind of got, got a dick guy, you know? He's got a lot more to show, too. Hopefully, like, I'm going to bring out 
in, into the fights. Like I had a man for, you know, I'll have more fights to show it off. Let's but like go. There's, there's, I haven't even shown like like two percent of what I can do. There we go. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm Damn. Excited, man. Yo, so that fight in the you had you fought in Vegas. What show was that in? That was um Final Fight Championship. What was Vegas like, yo? You were like Fight City vibes, huh? Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Like like I, I felt like that was also part of my like why I lost it. I wasn't fo- well. I was focused, but like I was too worried about like man, I'm in Vegas. You know, we're gonna have fun while we're here. But like now, I would be like, okay, we're in Vegas. We're here to get the job done. And yeah. Then I'm not thinking about doing anything else until I get the job done. But um, but yeah, Vegas was cool. How long ago was that? Was a while ago? That was yeah. That was um maybe like like four years ago maybe. Yo, you seem like it's like it's hot, but it's not hot. You feel that? You don't sweat. Yeah, it's like dry. It's hot, but you don't sweat. It's dry. I remember seeing this place like flying in like over the desert and like how like you could feel the heat like from the window on the plane. It's crazy. I'm like, bro, this is where people. You can like see, yeah, you can see, yeah, dog. (laughs) Yo, we ain't no humans supposed to be out there. That's a weird place, dog. Bro, that's like the perfect murder. Like, sounds weird, but like I was like, bro, you can just take a body and just throw it in the middle of the desert. That's a like, wild that's place, say, dog. Like, bro, like nobody is going out there. And it looks fake. It looks like a fake city, right? Like when you see it, yeah. like and everything is close but far. Yeah, like you know, yeah. oh, it's just right there. That's just an illusion, dog. These big ass casinos yeah. and these casinos are huge, bro. So you're just. I went to Vegas for the for for Alex dog, to watch Volkanovski when he this oh uh, no this was in Jacksonville. We went for Alex when he fought Holloway for the trilogy. Oh nice, that was in Vegas. That was my first time in Vegas, dog. Nice. So we went That's we went the whole squad. Thing. Oh my god, we had the whole old school team there. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he got and then, yo Max Holloway had mad fans, you know, bro. He's Max Holloway's a star in Vegas, especially in Vegas. The whole, whole crowd was all Max and me and my boys. We're just there for Alex, Alex and we're like, "Yo!" Ah! It was like, got real quiet, real quick. It was so yeah. epic. But um, yeah, bro, the Vegas vibe was like, "Oh no, dog, we're yeah. from the best city, bro, Miami." Yeah, yeah. there was. I mean, yeah, like Miami, we do it all. Miami's like, the best. Like dog. there was nothing in Vegas that I had an experience in Miami. Nah, bro, but, and um, there ain't no Cubans, dog. Except you know the 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 dispensary. You know, it's recreational, so that was cool. Let me check that out. Oh damn! That, so that's been around for a while, recreational weed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so even when you went, they had that. Yeah, they had it already. It was pretty cool. You just need your ID. And, like you gotta be over eighteen, I think. And I thought that was new, dog. That was the only thing I liked it about was Vegas. New to me, yeah, because you know we don't got that in Miami. No, I went to the dispensary for the first time uh, when I went there. That was crazy. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, gonna weed Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah, you know, I couldn't. Like, I was like, what, bro? Yeah. They're just like, you know what I'm saying? It was fucking epic, dog. Yeah. That was dope. And I bought one of those nice pre rolls. Holy smoke, that was the best joint I ever yeah. smoked, you know? Like, it was like one of those, like, 60% joints, you know? That part I didn't get to enjoy, because I did wait till after the fight oh, to fi- enjoy that. But, you know, I lost the fight, so, like, Ugh. even the guy was like, hey, are you a fighter? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm fighting tomorrow, you know? He's like, okay, man, I'm going to hook you up with some spoils as soon as you win. Uh. I'm like, hell yeah, you know, come right back to see you. Yeah, yeah, And then, yeah. like, you know, I lost the fight, whatever, I got choked out. In the se- I, was, I was whooping his ass, bro. I, I I rocked him like three times and I dropped him like on his ass with a nice um, like Manolo counter with the outside leg kick. Boom. I stepped into it with the right hand. Boom. Boom. And I dropped him like on his ass. And then like he shot in and like I lateraled him. We stood up and I kneed him in the stomach. And then like I started gassing out. He got on top. And this was one thing like I, I wasn't gaining weight. Like I wasn't lifting yet. So I was only like 150 pounds. But this guy came down from 170. Bro. When like I, the day before. Uh, yeah. He was like, I cut 15 pounds like the night before the fight. And he gained all that shit back. Because when he was on top of me, bro, I couldn't breathe. I remember saying to myself in my head, oh, shit, I wasn't ready. I'm like, fuck. Like, as soon as that thought popped in my head, shit just started going bad. He started, like, climbing on top of me. And then I gave up my back because, like, I gave up my back earlier and I stood up really easy. Like, I'm good at escaping. Yeah. But this time, like, when I gave him my back, he was like, I, I always describe it as going for the Super Bowl touchdown. He's like, get his back. Hurry, get his neck. Yeah. Oh, oh. And he grabbed my neck, bro. And I turned this it. way. I was like, ah. I turned this way. I'm like, I couldn't breathe. And then, like, it's just, you know, you start, you you just know it, bro. Did you go to sleep? No, I almost did. I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to sleep. Nah, no, I can't. Yeah, fuck, man. And I tapped. Sometimes I wish I would have gone to sleep, but. It's weird. I've gone to sleep in a fight. It's a weird feeling, yeah. I got slept. Have you been slept? Have you ever been going to sleep from a submission before um, in training and shit? No, in training I have once. In a, in a, while we're wrestling, you know, this douchebag. Me too. I don't I got, any names. He, you know, he tried to choke me. He doesn't even train at our gym anymore. Yeah. You know, but. 
And then he and then when he put you to sleep. Yeah, like um. And you thought you, know, you were wrestling. I went for a single leg with Matt. Yeah, because it was it was it was wrestling. Yeah, it was yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And like you know, there's no subs. But um, he tried to he just tried to like like throw me over. But instead of throw me over, he just held it. He just held it mid air in the guillotine. And, and you're like, I didn't even know we were doing that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, I didn't I didn't really go to sleep, but like like I remember like he let it go and it hit the ground. And I was like, I was, I was going like this. Yeah. I was doing this type of movement, like looking down. I'm like, oh fuck, like why can't I move? But like I was still like conscious. Yeah. But it was weird though. I guess I was out, but you know. <laughs> It was yeah, I've been slept with arm. I always get slept with arm triangles. I've been slept with arm triangle twice in training, and I got slept one time with by my student with a bone arrow choke. <laughs> no, no, yeah. with the I forgot the name of the choke. No, it's a choke that um, it might be the bone. No, it's not the bone the arrow. Bone, That's the rear naked. The key, That's right? the rear naked. Yeah. Oh, it was a baseball bat choke. Baseball it was bat. one of those ones where like you pass the guy's guard and then like he still he still chokes oh, you. Oh, so know? yeah, it was in the gi, right? Yeah, I know yeah, the baseball bat one. Yeah, yeah. It was in a gi. I'm like, oh, dang, this is not good. And I'm like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And then I pass it. Oh, no, I think I was going for the sweep, and I got the sweep, and then it's like. <laughs> oh, you know what? Yeah, in the gi one time, somebody did do a, this guy is like 230 pounds. Yeah. He's a big guy. Um, he he did some he did some choke on me and like I didn't go to sleep but like when he like when I, he he saw and he heard me like uh, uh, like that he like let go but like my eyes were still open but I was like trying to get up but it was like mad slow I was like oh I almost went out right there and I was <laughs> like laughing I'm like oh that was a close one <laughs> I think if you let yourself go to sleep you go to sleep quicker dog like as like in like I in think in a career? fight in a fight you should tap yeah. because uh, or at least in training it's you should definitely tap. If you go to sleep, I think it's easier for you to fall asleep. And the I know, next time. Yeah, because some guys, is, I know some guys in, in, uh, that I used to train with, and they just don't tap, and then they always just go to sleep. And then in fights, I've seen them get slept. Like um, super easy? Yeah, and like, yo, I actually, bro, I, I fought this guy, Marat, in 1FC, mm -hmm. and uh, this Russian guy, dog, he's like from Dagestan, fucking, and then, um, yeah, he took me down, had me in an arm triangle, and he put me to sleep. And then, but, but like two weeks before, I got put to sleep in training, dog, in my last wrestling session. Yeah. I remember, like, same thing. Like, I was uh, wrestling with a guy. It was wrestling class. And I was shooting a takedown. I think, same thing. He had me, like, in a, like, like single leg. And he had me in something. And then, like, when, but, like, same thing, dog. Like, the coach was like, time. And I was, like, on my knees. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I woke up. And I was, like, and I went. But, like, nobody said nothing, dog. Yeah. But I'm, like. Like, they didn't notice you were out. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was, it was like, the same thing for me, too. When I was, like, spinning like that, they're like, bro, are you okay? Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then my coach is like, next round. And then, like, people are already starting. And I'm like, I don't kind of know what's going on. Like, because it takes a minute to put the pieces together. It's like you feel, like, drunk for a second, yes. right? Like, yeah, the movie's yeah, spinning. Yeah. yeah, dog. When I got slept in the fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, huh. I was on my back. And, like, it's weird. It's like, you're not in pain or nothing. You feel really, like, your body yeah. feels all tingly, you know? And then first, like, you see. Like, I think first the, um. Like it's like, it's like, you know, yeah. and then I look up and I just see lights, like bright ass lights. It was in the ring That's too. That's so trippy, bro. It was in the 1FC <laughs> ring. It was the first time they had fights in a Muay Thai ring. They had yeah. Muay Thai fights. I fought in the Super Series. It was kind of dope because I had like yeah. Nong O. Oh, I fought with some famous ass Muay Thai fighters on That's the cool, card, man. you know? Yeah. Uh, my boy Brad Riddell fought kickboxing. Brad Riddell? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He fights He's, in the um, UFC City now. kickboxing? Yes. Yeah. So that was like a good that, night. Man. Yeah, that's a, oh man, I learned a lot from them. I've been there and shit. I got to train with Eugene and, and these oh, guys over awesome. there. I follow them on um, on YouTube. Oh my god, I think they got a YouTube channel or maybe it's, it's, it's Style Bender's YouTube. But I, I like watching their their practices. Yeah, it's similar it, to what we do here with Manolo. I think so. Very yeah. similar, dog. Yo, I know the blueprint. I have that whole blueprint. I know how they guys prepare because I've been training with like Volk and all these that's guys. Awesome, man. What's kind of cool is like I kind of have like the blueprint in my head like for like how these like I know like the conditioning says it's cool very super lucky dog you know yeah never yeah, yeah. fight anybody from that no yeah <laughs> 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 okay. they're gonna be coming to them for them, so. yeah they're gonna be coming for the UFC are you gonna yeah. go to the UFC or did anybody do you know anybody who got tickets for that puppy man I did man you um, got tickets I I was gonna get tickets but I. This person flaked, man. They're mad expensive, dog. I'm not gonna mention any names, but you know, if they ever see this, you know, they're gonna know. Like, Damn. Yeah. Oh. They're gonna know what I'm talking about. Me and the boys, bro, we were gonna go, you know, get a nice little spot there in the in the Bacardi Lounge for like a good amount of money. Oh, what happened? They just the guy didn't come through, man. I'm like, yo, I got like like 30 people down, you know. It was for like 175 dollars each, some shit like that. I'm like, bro, oh. to go see that, the USB, to, to see that, that's way worth it. And it's the mean 30 of the boys, and then plus, the more the merrier. Yeah. I was like, let's get it going, bro. And, you know, 
I was just I was starting to annoy myself. If I ask again, like the third time without a response, I'm saying like, oh fuck this. I know. I'm in the same boat right now. I'm, I'm trying to get some tickets, hit. but I don't want to be like too bothersome. You oh, know. I hear the tickets are expensive though. Like the regular, like eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. Four hundred. They were like the top level. I heard was like eight hundred. Yeah, you know, that's something crazy, like the dog. nosebleeds. Yeah, I mean, and then you get there, it's like thirty dollar drinks. It's a thing. It's a yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't do that like sober. You know, I went to Vegas, dog, and that's when... enjoy that to the fullest. Yeah, bro, but those UFC fights are expensive. I went to Jacksonville yeah. for Volk, and we went to Vegas for Volk, and I was like, yo, those things are no joke, you know? Yeah. Those could, They make a lot of money on that gate and merch and shit, all the stuff they sell, bro. Yeah. What do you think, dog? Israel versus Pereira for the, the, the quadruple, dog. What Jeez. are you thinking for the... Oh, this man. is the third time they fight? The fourth, The dog. fourth time. Honestly, this is a bad idea. If I was Izzy, I would just let it be, man. As long, I know it's not that easy, you know? Because, like, you know, you got the two kickboxing ones and you got now the s- second one in MMA. Oh, man. It gets, gets pretty rough. That's well, here's the same the, guy. Here's the thing, too, with Izzy. Here's what's... what's well, all right. He kind of has to, right? It's weird because check this out. Okay, as a, as a warrior and as a fighter, you got to be like, this guy's an animal. He's a yeah, savage he because he doesn't really need to take this fight. Dog, if he takes six months off, right... Or like a year, I don't know, but he doesn't like to take off. But if he didn't get this rematch, dog, you let uh, Glover, you let Pereira fight a Marvin Vittori or Robert Whittaker, they win that fight all day. Yeah. It's just styles, Pereira, dog. Pereira? Yeah. No, yeah, for that sure. guy ain't got no wrestling, dog. Yeah, hundred percent. Izzy was ragdolling, and Izzy's big, yeah. dog. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the fact that he's taking the fight gives him so much. I give so much respect, bro, because dog, uh, like he's got to change it up this time, though. I got a, I got a, I got a theory on that. I think he, he needs he to attack him. He I think he needs tools. to blitzkrieg him, bro. He's tried to do yeah. the touching. He's tried to, bro. It's like Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, bro. Mm-hmm. Tyson Fury tried to run from Deontay Wilder the whole fight, and he got caught twice. Right. And then when he switched it up and he went after him, it changed the whole fight, dog. I would, exactly. I mean, I would he go has... after him, and he knows he can hurt him, dog. Mm-hmm. He's rocked him in the kickboxing fight, and he rocked him in the this. Fuck, if that punch was 30 seconds earlier, that could have yeah. been finished, dog, you know? Straight up. We are spitting and shit. <laughs> Yo, he's got to go after him. But here's the thing with Para. You shouldn't give nobody four chances, dog. A exactly. la Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. I'm hoping that four times the charm. Like, you don't, like as a fighter, listen. This would define him big time. You shouldn't. He could, pull sh- out, he could pull off the wall. Bro, if he pulled this Izzy. off, yeah. oh, my God. Now they're going to do a, a, a third one for MMA now if he pulls it off. Oh, now going cool. to want his. Yeah, yeah. See, that's this is why like, I would rather, like, like even now, like win or lose, I would just, like, I don't care about rematching my other my losses. Like, I just want to move forward. Or go ahead, ahead, yeah, for but sure. But I guess for, like, Izzy and, and Adesan, uh, I mean, and Pereira, like, they, they have to do it because of the ranking system and the belt, you know, like, they kind of have to, you know. Yeah. But yeah, for Izzy, bro. this is his time, though. If this it's, time, if it's any other time, that was better. It's a quick turnaround, though, bro. Yeah. This fight was just in December. Yeah. This is not even six months later, yo. They got to wrestle him, man. You know? Or he could wrestle him. He, damn, he, it's kind of... Dis- people forget about that. I mean, especially if they're not... Re- he put him in the Russian handcuff. Wrestling. When he put yeah. Pera, he put Pera in the Russian handcuff. And, bro, they train wrestling so hard. He's training with Frank Hickman, my, old, my wrestling coach. Is, mm-hmm. is Izzy's Frank, his wrestling coach. And Volks, too. Volkanovski's wrestling coach, so... He could definitely fucking wrestle fuck him. Yeah. I would say, like, Cain Velasquez, Junior Dos Santos. Just go after or him. Or, like, win half the, the round, like, get him tired. Because, be, like, wrestling, that saps everybody's energy. But that's what just I thought. make him work, make him work, and then stand up with him for, like, like a couple minutes. Don't give him a whole round to like, get lucky, you know? This is what I don't understand about Pereira, bro. He's a big-ass he's a big ass middleweight, and he didn't get tired, bro. He got that fight. He's a, he's a monster, too. Dog, man. he got... Yo, but that's what I'm saying. I thought he would be tired. He got... Like, he still got that knockout power. Like, I thought yeah. we did that in that fight. This is a crazy fight, dog. Yeah. And then who else? Oh, then they got with this weekend, bro. Usman and Edwards. Yeah. I'm going for Edwards. Me too, dog. Like, I, like, I like him better than Usman. Usman is freaking... Headshot. <laughs> Blah! That shit. <laughs> yeah, that was epic. Um, They fought in... Evolution, ev- evolution, they fought in elevation, fought bro. Oh, no. When, when Leon got tired, they were fighting in elevation. And Usman trains in elevation. Oh, okay, I see. Yo, this, I didn't, I didn't realize that this might be a different fight, bro. Because now they're cause fighting. Because Leon got um, gassed hard in that fight. Who are they fighting now? England. 
in Leon's oh, hometown. In, in his hometown. Dog. All right, so he's in be in the O2 arena. It's gonna be crazy, <laughs> dog. And then my oh, yeah. favorite fighter in the lightweight right now, and the best guy I've ever trained with ever, uh, striking everything. Um, no, no, the fuck. There's two. Alex and him is like I don't know. Alex yeah. more well-rounded, but the best striker, striker, uh, Rafael Fiziev. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you yeah, seen? Yeah, I like I like his style. Dog, I had the privilege of he was teaching kickboxing and Tiger kickboxing. when I was there. I love kickboxing. The way he's he fights, the way that he teaches, bro, it's crazy. Like his combinations, his um, it's his uh, um, his change is like he has his three, his three phase, four phase. Like he comes in one two bump. It's like his oh my god, he has a lot of phases to his attacks. Patterns, right? Yeah, his patterns are crazy, dog. Nice. He has like four or five phases, like. Kick, punch, kick. You seen how fluid he is, bro? Yeah. When he kicks in the UFC, it's He's got cool. good energy, too. Good movement. He's yeah, always, like, yeah. on his toes. You seen the way he can, And he does the... He yeah. got famous for doing Flexible, that. Flexible, yeah. For doing that. The, the, the lean back. The Matrix lean back. Yeah. Where Joe Rogan was calling it a long time ago, you know? Yeah. I think Gaethje's a terrible matchup for him, bro. Yeah, because Gaethje is... that. That's literally how you, like, beat those guys. You counter hard. Like, Gaethje style, like, hard counter and, like stepping in punches and like like all that he's got so he's many a, tools dog gage he's a good clasher yes and that like he's really durable so that makes it like worse you know yes. some people yes. some people are clashers by mistake but like gage g does it on purpose and he's durable like his you his, know thick bones yeah, he's got that farmer strength head, dog. And, like his shoulders are, he has big traps a big neck he, he has a great double leg and and top pressure he could win this fight, dog. He's high level, bro. Yeah, if his ear doesn't come off, come out sharp, sharp and ready. It's three it'd be rounds. Very easy. Yeah. Which benefits Rafael because yeah. he did. He, he can has, turn it up for three he rounds. He has tired. Yeah. He has gotten. He has slowed down. Mm -hmm. Bobby Green had a crazy good fight with him. Bobby Green yeah. just straight crazy. Like I can't. So it just goes to show you that, like, holy shit. Damn, he fought Brad Riddell. I trained with Brad mm -hmm. when Brad was a kickboxing coach. And then I trained with Hoffa. I was crazy to watch that fight. Yeah. Um, Brad didn't look like he let go, you know. But um, Justin can – he might be able to turn it on in the third round. But Justin has lost in the third rounds twice yeah. to big pressure. Just big, recently, right? Not recently. Um, he lost to Dustin Poirier. And then he lost to somebody else, dog. Remember, um, he had two losses kind of the same where he got finished – um uh, Oliveira, right? Oliveira oh Oliveira, yes. It was Oliveira yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he well he had Khabib, Oliveira, and, and Poirier that he lost to. No, but there's one more in the UFC. Fuck, didn't somebody remember when he was fighting uh, oh no. And those were like his first losses too, I feel like. He um I'm trying to think, dog. There was one fight that somebody Was he undefeated? No, no. He was in um Man, this is when we need the young Jamie right now. We always yeah. do this. This is like the five yeah, times. You need that. A, uh, a stat guy. Yeah, here. we need a guy right there in the corner, yeah. dog. <laughs> Whatever. We be just winging it, dog. I be yeah. staying mad. Yo, I get fact checked all that. I just be saying random <laughs> shit like I know it, dog. And the people behind the comments like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? It's not true. <laughs> nah, so uh, Rafael Gaethje, who do you think, dog? Um, I, I like I like Rafael for that one. And Rafael just because his style. You know, I, 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 I'm not going for, for whoever. I want to see a good fight, but, like, I like this guy's style better. So I guess you could say I'm going for him. For yeah. Fiziev. I, me too. I got Fiziev. He's a good dude, too, dog. He's like a, he's yeah. like a 100 guy. He's like, he's like a solid guy. Like, I trained with him for years. Um, I was gone from Tiger for, like, a year, and I went back as a coach. When I signed to 1FC, I went back to Tiger, and then I was, like, training there full-time, living there, and that's when he was the coach. So, like, yeah, I was able to – Get some good work in, bro. Who like, was coach Fiziev? Yeah, Fiziev was the kickboxing coach there. At, he was at like, Tiger Muay Thai? Yeah. And then yeah. I was able to get like a lot of work with him in the wrestling and shit, you know? Like, That's cool. Bro, they have, his, they his, have like um, like guest coaches going well, there and stuff? Or? They have guest coaches, but he was like, he's the. that's why he lives in Thailand, because there's a work permit through Tiger, oh, so he can okay. stay. So he's... he's he was he moved from Kyrgyzstan to Thailand like back in the day to chase uh, his dream. Oh, you know? so he's been in Thailand for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he cool. start, yeah, he was fighting Muay Thai. That's where he did the Matrix hit before UFC. Yeah. He was in Thailand. Oh, you know, so he was already famous before that. Yeah, yeah. He was before in the gym. That. He was in Phuket Top Team, the gym across the street mm -hmm. for years, just destroying everybody on the Muay Thai circuit, killing yeah. everybody, dog. And then my boy, um, the man, my boy who's a manager at Tiger, recruited him to P Tiger. So Tiger kind of poached him from Phuket Top Team. Nice. And they got him a job where he's making money, <laughs> getting paid, and with a work permit so he can live in Thailand. And then That's and then he got signed to the UFC like a couple months later, you know. He was in the Million Dollar Tournament in Road FC, and then he got signed. But, yo, Oof. 
He's one of the yo. He's one of the best athletes I ever trained so with. So far, he's paying off though. He's been uh, winning. So yeah, and his wrestling, people don't know his wrestling is just as good as everything else. He's one of the nice. few guys at Tiger that I never submitted or like yeah, never tapped. That's cool. Body. So like Tiger, they do they do wrestling classes too. Cause oh. Sometimes I've seen their sparring. Like all those guys are hitting like like dope ass takedowns Bro. and karate sweeps. Like yeah, good. dog. No, no. Um. I really fu- I kind of did it backwards when I went to Thailand, bro. I got to Thailand and I went, I went, I got stuck in the MMA room and I really didn't do enough th- Muay Thai like I should have because I always had MMA fights. But yeah. um, bro, my wrestling coaches they have George Hickman who's a Division One wrestler, Frank Hickman Division One um, mm-hmm. state champion, bunch of titles. Yeah, dog, the wrestling there is crazy, and we got all these Dagestan wrestlers. So in Thailand, like, it's not really Thai yeah, people shit. training. The Thai people train Muay Thai, Muay Thai, but the MMA yeah. is like, you get fighters from Eastern Europe. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's cool. A lot, of, bro. A lot of these top ten guys. Everybody just leaves home and meets up there. Everybody, everybody leaves home. They live there, and then everybody's just there training full time, dog. So that's it's cool. crazy. Like, you go to the mats, and it's like 50 animals, dog. Yeah, that's cool. Yo, know, guys, you never heard of in your life, and then like, yeah, like the Bellator 185 champ. 185 pound champ he's ukrainian guy he's like in the ukrainian war right now it's crazy but he was the like savage like this guy malls he the just Mover he just whatever. fight and he, and he won i'm not sure dog he's, he has like i'm not sure he has like tattoos he oh yeah he destroyed um he destroyed uh, he fucked up I'm forgetting Di- his he, name he fucked up lima real bad diego lima yeah or douglas lima the douglas one lima, douglas sorry. lima the one who's yeah. in bellator champ okay yeah, yeah. he beat Damn. douglas for the title that guy's no joke yeah and this guy ran through him dog and he was training a tiger on the mats Bro, Kamzat, Kam, Kamzat was there recently, you oh, know? Yeah. That was after my era, though, you know? Yeah. So, but yo, man, that's great, dog. I love it. Fucking, so what's the plan now, man? You just came off the big victory, off the yep. KO. Do you have a manager? Or? Yep, I do. Shout out to David Arvello. Nice. He's my boy. Is it a management company or like he kind of deals? Yeah, right now we're with Upper Sports around, um, Upper Sports Management Company now. Okay, nice, bro. And you've been with them for how long? Um, Just for a couple months now. Just like I think about a month. Oh, just, just recently, yeah. I um I, I disbanded from first round management and oh, I moved over yeah. to upper sports round with Dave. So Oh nice, bro. Yeah. And um has he gotten he's already gotten you fights? He's dealing with the combate for you and stuff? Yeah, yeah. They, he's up there. So technically I still have two more fights with combate, you know. Obviously if, you know, somebody calls me with like some great news and some good money, you know, that that'll be a conversation to have. But, you know. Um but for right now, I'm just just chilling. Right now, Dave is out of town. He's chilling right now. And um, we, when he comes back, you know, we'll go to Flanagan's and we'll talk about what's next. Nice, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. So, so fresh off the combat to victory, dog. I got big. Oh, yeah. I got big things for you, man. I appreciate you oh, coming yeah. on the podcast, dog. Oh yeah, thank you for having no, me. No, no, hell yeah, You're man. The first I w- person I talked to, so. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Have you done a podcast before? Never. I've never done anything like oh, this. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, and you're in great hands, dog. We've oh, had yeah. the. This is this. Is, oh, yo, when you do the listen, I had Brendan Lockning on before he won the PFL Million Dollar Tournament. He's oh, the PFL yeah. Forty Five Pound Champ. All right. Uh, I've had Volkanovski on here twice. So, yo, when you do this podcast, dog, good things happen, dog. Fuck so yeah, we're putting man. good juju towards your way, dog. Get you uh, that. Yeah. Ca- I want to see you in contender. That. Maybe contender series, or maybe go straight through, dog. I'd rather go straight through, honestly. Like, yeah. not not to like the down talk, like contender, but like, um, I don't like the whole sound of trying out, you know. Yeah, dog. And, and yo, um, like what I just did on 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 combate, you know, I could I can do that, you know, uh, outside of the contender as well, and still blow up, you know. Yeah, for sure. And um, like if if the money's better, I'm gonna have to go with wherever the money is, you know. And then like I can just keep doing what I'm doing here, not at the UFC level, but like UFC level exposure, I guess, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like um, I just so I could like solidify like maybe like a better contract or more money if I could just walk on with like um, already vetted, you know, already has a big name. I'd rather do it like that. So I don't have a problem with with building. Maybe go to you know, maybe PFL. Yeah, like all those options. Bellator. Or even the one, you know. Yo. That'd be cool. You Are you looking at, are you interested in one? I, I like the sound of that 35 to 45 weight class. Oh, you know, it's like, the best. So you do, you do rehydration, right? Mm-hmm. And then they, they check your weight and they check your pee. All right, and your pee's got to be clear, dog. So that's as long yeah, as you're not like dehydrated. Yeah, just like days in wrestling. Yeah, it's just like that, yeah. dog. But you can, did you guys do that? Would you guys like drink mad water and hold your yeah, pee in wrestling? Yeah, yeah. Because you can kind of just, you can kind of yeah, finagle we, it. Yeah, we, we finessed it a little bit, obviously, you know. Yeah, but, I would um, fight, dog. And then I would just, in the morning, I wouldn't pee, dog. I would just hold my pee and lose the weight. And it would be like fucking crazy. I'm like, I hope I didn't fucking so that's destroy how they my bladder. They, they just make sure you can pee at. at well, they the, check your pee level. They got to check the pee level, right? The pee level's got to be within a certain amount. You know what I'm saying? But right. my, my theory has always been if it's pretty clear, I've had some close calls where I was really yeah. scared. One time, like, 
for me, I just try to drink as much water in the morning and try to sweat it out and hold my pee yeah. just because even sometimes when I was pretty normal, like I peed once where I thought I was, because I was fighting at 155. Mm -hmm. I do, was doing featherweight, which is really 55, which was stupid for me. Right. So I'm just like fighting at my weight. And I would just check my, one day I went to the weigh-ins and my pee was like mad yellow. He's like, yo, this is looking mad yellow. And I was like <laughs> freaking out. I was like at the cusp, you know? Yeah. So I always try to like drink mad water. I think water the magic number is like you, you got to piss three times and then on that fourth piss is where you'll get like the best water to use for the test. Well, I don't know, though. My boy was saying, level. yeah, 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 yeah. They were saying, like, like let out the the first, yeah, the first P is, like, the the, the oldest one. It's, like, yeah, all the. You got, you got to go, like, midstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that how you did it in wrestling? Like, yeah. you pee a little bit, shh, and then we had, we had a whole bunch of, I don't even know if it's actually legit, but, like, those are all the superstitions that we use. Oh, like, just bro science. You got to go on the fourth piss, <laughs> and you got to just drink, like, a little bit less than, than half the gallon, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, mad bro science, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But yeah, hundred percent. The one dog. is definitely appealing, you know. Bro, I'm gonna make. Well, we can make some calls for you for one, dog. And you get yeah. to. Have you ever found a ring before? Um. Yeah, I have. In Vegas, it was a ring. Oh, how'd you like so it? It was. A, it was a cool feeling. I liked it. I liked being like in the in the essence of a different ring, like martial arts. You know. More open. I feel like you could breathe better. Yeah. In ring. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the wall. You feel like that you wall can feel of claustrophobic. Death. Yeah, I yeah, get. I get. It's it. gonna cause I get you. Yeah. Like, I see how people freak out and everything. Also, fight. that could be a, a disadvantage too. For for some takedowns against the ring, because uh, there's you know there's ways to finesse out of there, you know. Oh, bro, they hold the rope. I was fighting in China, yeah. bro. I get a body lock, and the guy would just hold the rope, and then Chinese ref don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just like, ah, you know, like yeah. And then uh, submissions has happened to me a few times. I had a submissions. I had two submissions go out of bounds. The ring has its has its flaws. Yeah. Um, but I do like that. I I do feel move breathing good. You know. I fought a lot of rings. I fought like five or six rings. And uh, so in China, sometimes I'd have random rings. Yeah. And then in 1FC, I fought in the big ring. But I haven't done good in 1FC. I've lost all my fights in the 1FC <laughs> ring, oh, dog. Man. Fuck. I got to fucking go back just to get a win in the ring, dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> And the ring there is huge, and the, the the ropes go like to your head, so it feels like a cage. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? It's like yeah, mad ropes. It's like a five like rope. The medium, shit. the three rope. The three yeah, rope yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, That's my man. cool. Yo, I appreciate you coming on. So listen, though, yeah. I got I got a lot of uh, I got a lot of admiration. I got a lot of um, what do you call it? Um, I got a lot of faith in you. Though. I know you're gonna be Hell doing yeah. big Thank things. You, bro. you know I what's funny? That. When I first moved to Miami, my boy told me about you, uh, Juan Tapia. You know if you know Juan, my boy Juan. Juan. Tapia, yeah, he used to work um, with bartender? you at a restaurant. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. And he was telling me about. I was training him, and he was like, "Yo, my boy, fucking Justin, you gotta check him out, dog. He's been doing this since he was a fucking kid." And I remember he put me on, and then I saw you were fighting soon. I wanted to get you before the fight, but that shit just happened yeah, like that, you know? Small world, yeah. Small world, dog. Yeah, cool, dude. So it's good, man. Yo, yeah. I really appreciate you coming out, my man. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah, dog. Thank you, you, bro. Wrap it up like that. Me. Hell yeah, man. Like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, oh, let's uh, plug up everything. Tell the peoples where they can follow you on uh, socials. If you got any sponsors, plug all your shit up right now. All right. Um, shout, all out right here, my, boom. shout out to my sponsors White Lion Therapeutic, Rejuveline. Arancibio Bales Bonds, Novielli Boats, and Champ Sports Meals. I mean, and Champs Meals. They're, they're hooking it up heavy on meal prep, bro. Like, I'm eating clean, cleaner than clean. I'm going to hit know. them up. I need some sponsors for the podcast, dog. Yeah. I'm going to start getting some health in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, and, White, and Amy, too. Your yeah, guy Amy, from White yeah, Lion. Yo, shout, shout out to, to Amy, dog. She's yeah. the shit. Oh, so you get your massages from Amy. She keeps oh, you yeah. all fresh and ready to go. Yeah. You do your pre-fight massage before we're hurt, before the fight? Um, I do it like a week out because like, like if she does, she gives me the sports massage. I get like, have like knots in my back and like that shit hurts, bro. So like, it's not really relaxing to, to end with, but you know, she'll start off slow. But you know, she does what's most important, bro. She gets all the kinks and knots out of my neck and my back. And you feel and good then, after, right? Yeah, you feel sore for like two days and then like for the next, like the third day after that, you'll be like feeling loose again. Like fresh and rejuvenated, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. Also, my um, Instagram, oh, SlickJ145. Yeah. Boom. Just yeah, like that. Get those followers up. Hell yeah. yeah. Yo, my man. We're out. All right. My G. Honey Badger Hour, episode 74. We're out.